How is everyone doing tonight? Three years on YouTube. I think for the first year, I streamed... Well, I didn't do anything live the first year on YouTube, but I think most of the videos I brought to YouTube in the first year were like Game Boy... Let me just make sure I have audio here. They were like Game Boy camera type quality. They were um, 240p, maybe 144p at best. Tonight, for the first time ever, 1080p Dan. 1080p Dan live. Um, why is my live stream intro the same as your thumbnail? I made that from scratch. <laughs> we got MetaZoo Games YouTube in here. But yeah, I, uh, I talked about T-Mobile Internet. I believe it was last year. Last year. Last week. Last week I talked about T-Mobile Internet. I ended up getting it. I ended up getting it. And I set it up like eight hours ago this afternoon. And it worked pretty well. Uh, let, me, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me catch up with these questions. We got, poop, we got poop sock in here with the questions. I did not get, I, I just realized now, I was, um, so the lighting is not as it, as it should be. The lighting is not as it normally is for my live streams. Normally I have the, the room lights off and then I have all these Elgato fancy lights. I've, I've got the nice light strips behind me. But given that I'm no longer using my DSL, I had to unplug my PC. I, I took the ethernet cord from that, that, DSL modem, and I plugged it into my T-Mobile T-Mobile home internet modem thing. So somehow that completely killed all my all my stream lights because those are hooked up through Wi-Fi. And now I, I don't know why exactly they died because I, I thought they would have been fine on their own thing. But but yeah, I have dropped zero frames so far. I'm streaming at 1080p, and I, I'm streaming with like 16. 16,000 mega uh, kilobits uh bitrate which normally I do 1500 kilobits bitrate I believe but anyways it took me 3 years it took me 3 years to get here but I am finally here at 1080p I might start doing videos at 4K I I, I think I've I've been told before I have a face for 240p I have a face for radio more so but I definitely have a face for 480p live streams more so than 1080p or 4k but i don't think i could quite do 4k live but i should be able to do 4k for pre-records now because my upload speed is like 60 megs instead of uh 1.5 so about a 40 times uh, what, what would have taken me 40 hours to upload would only take me an hour now theoretically so yeah my um my download and upload i, I did three speed tests today i did my phone my, my Verizon 5G phone, which I don't think I have 5G where I live, but my phone was 25 down and 5 up. My DSL internet that my PC is always hooked up to, uh, Ethernet connected for my live streams, was 15 down and 1.5 up. But I was dropping frames like crazy the past few weeks. Over the first year and a half of me doing live streams, I was never dropping frames on DSL. But for whatever reason, the past like month or two, I've been dropping frames like crazy. My new internet, I did a speed test just before I went live. Uh, I, oh, I, I was going to say, I might not have even closed it, but I guess I did close it. I posted it in Discord. Let, let me see what the actual numbers were, so I'm not guessing. Um, my new stream is 176.6 down and 33 up. There was one time that I did it, and it was closer to 50 or 60 up. It was over 200 down. Right before I went live, I think it was like... 60 to 80 down and 20 to 25 up. So it definitely varies. It definitely varies a little bit, but uh, I might have to look into T-Mobile for like my phone carrier. I always thought T-Mobile was kind of bad and Verizon was the better one, but but this is like a T-Mobile home internet thing just based off cell service. So I, I feel like that's enough. Uh, start, starting off the stream with five minutes of internet talk, but I, I will get into the... Um, into the live chat questions now. So we, we've got poop sock here. <laughs> uh, appreciate your questions. If you could be a Disney princess, which one would it be and why? Um, oh man, I don't have my overlay 
Where's my overlaid question? Let me see. So that's that overlay. Uh, oh no. Browser. YouTube highlighted message. Where are we? Why is my YouTube highlighted message not coming through? Okay, now it should be. There we go. If you could be a Disney princess, which one would it be and why? That's uh, <laughs> that's so tough. I, I, I guess I'll say, also, why is your head sticking out of your shirt? I guess I'll say Moana. Of all the ones my kids have made me watch like a hundred times in the past year, like like Frozen, I think I've come around on Frozen some. It's not bad. I would have said a year or two ago that I didn't like it. It's not bad, but uh, Moana I really like. Moana is actually really good, so I'm I'm gonna pick that one. It's got a sequel coming out in the fall, so I, I'm bullish. I'm, the reason I picked it is because I enjoy the movie, and I'm bullish on the on the on the franchise, if you want to call it that, on the IP, that that uh, subset of Disney IP, because there there's a. There's a uh, a sequel coming out in the fall, so that's why I'm picking Moana. Um, why did why did I pick Ariel? I didn't pick Ariel. I th I think that's my wife's favorite Disney Disney princess movie. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm down to uh I'm down to I posted on my Instagram earlier two thirty six. I did. I I might be having some IPAs tonight, and I might have had some uh, chicken wings and pizza for dinner. So I made sure to take a I made sure to take a picture of the scale before my my bad my my cheat day. I guess. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I, I I just hit this a minute ago. If anyone has any questions, feel free to hit me with them. I I mainly just wanted to test out this new internet. I, I thought about initially being cautious. I said, five minutes in, I said I was going to be done with the internet talk, but here we go again. I initially was going to be cautious, and I was just going to try streaming in 720p to see how well it worked. But I'm like, you know what? Let's go for it. I I'm paying 55 bucks a month. I have two internets right now. The only two things that I put on the new internet are my phone and my, my, my streaming PC. So uh, this is like best case scenario. So if this didn't work well... This was not going to be good for 1080p. I was I was going to try like pokey flips on 720 and see how it went and go from there. But um, given that this seems to be working well, I, I've dropped zero frames so far. I uh, I'm I'm likely going to cancel the DSL and I'm going to go with T-Mobile Home Internet for the whole for the whole thing. Um, uh, 55 bucks a month. My DSL was only 40, but like it's worth the extra 15 bucks a month. Uh, I I can justify that. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, th three years on YouTube yesterday, three years on YouTube yesterday, episode one of Pokey Flips, season one, episode one, before it was even called Pokey Flips, came out three years ago yesterday. Crazy, Cr crazy to have, uh, come so far. It it's been a fun journey. Yeah, I, uh, I, I sent the initial payout for Pokey Martin's, uh, Pokey Martin's consignment. Venture, so appreciate you sending in. Welcome to the 2000s, Dan. It's nice here. Yeah, I I don't think I can quite stream in 4K, but like 4K pre-recorded videos. I don't think anyone wants 4,000 pixels of me, but like I, they could they could happen. I don't think anyone wants a thousand pixels of me, but it could happen if you wanted it to. Yeah, sounds like iPhone. They throttle the internet back after a couple of years. We got Pokey Chef saying, I left Nick's eBay live for this. Can you make it worth it? LOL. <laughs> Moana Dan the Fisherman did it. Um, hey, you're not gonna be spending money here with me. So I'm I'm saving you money if you left Nick's eBay live. Can I shout out my personal favorite Japanese wholesaler? Hit up Retrospects, find him on Instagram, find him on YouTube. He is a co-host of the Cardboard Hands podcast. If you're looking for I, I just sent someone to you today, Retro. I, I told him to say that Dan sent you. Um, I need to, I need to find an affiliate code. If, if you hit up retro for Japanese product, uh, one piece, Pokemon, wh whatever else you may be after, M maybe Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know if, if, if that's a thing, but, uh, 
feel free to hit up Retro. Tell tell him Dan sent you, and maybe Retro will uh will, will kick me back something. I don't know. We don't have anything arranged. When is my four percent fee going to increase? So it will functionally increase, and I kind of hate the fact that it will. But like, there will be a new hidden fee being uh implemented when the eBay buyer's premium kicks in. But as long as the selling side stays zero percent. I never intend on raising my fee. Obviously, if the selling fee goes up to 4%, I'm going to have to raise my fee to like 8% probably. But as of right now, the selling fee is zero. The buyer's premium is zero. Uh, so I, I charge 1% to 4% depending on your sell price. Whatever whatever my fee is, that's what I'm making. Less shipping it to the eBay vault, which is not much. But, uh, but yeah, as of right now, I'm obviously arbitraging off the fact that it's 0% selling fees. And... Um, unfortunately that like hidden three percent buyer's premium is going to come at some point later this year but we don't know exactly when um what are your plans to scale up the business can't be slacking now dan so the biggest things on my on my radar right now like on, on my horizon in the short to intermediate term ebay live it, it won't like i won't be nick old school pokemon is the face of his own ebay live nick nick is grinding that ebay live 20 hours a week of facetime on the live streams I intend on getting Catch em All Collectibles eBay up and running on eBay Live, but I will do a periodic stream here and there. Probably once I start, I will probably do maybe say five to ten streams within the first month to, to get a, a feel of it, to to start setting it up, figure out what I want to pay, what, what I have to pay streamers. But I want to get some streamers set up to where I send streamers product, uh, not a W-2, a 1099 independent contractor. So it, it'll be like a big outlet for me to be able to move product without having it be my direct labor. So they will be doing the streaming. They will be doing the shipping, fulfilling. I will just be providing the product. I have a lot of product. I have access to a lot of products. So I turn down buying stuff all the time. That would be great for eBay Live because as of today, I don't have the outlet. I have tons of modern product I get allocated. That would be great for uh, streaming. I have access to retro specs. Uh, I have access to retro specs for Japanese product that I that is great for streaming on eBay Live. So I could see myself within the next year having a few streamers who are running four or five nights a week, potentially. Like that, that's the upside, I guess. The downside, it, it doesn't pan out well. I, I can't find stable, consistent streamers who want to do it. And may, maybe eBay Live as a whole just doesn't go well. Like. Who knows? But that's something that I'm looking into. TCG player store your products. It is a fraction of what Troll and Toad Evo used to be. But that is a big thing that I intend to do to help scale up. Basically just, I'm good at sourcing. I want to offload a lot more of the, the selling, fulfilling, and storage. So those are two huge things. Dan was all proud of himself for setting that new internet up and then hopped in a stream and the only person asking questions is named Poop Sock. <laughs> Uh, it, I don't think it was OBS. Maybe it was, but, but either way, like if I can go from paying 40 or 15 down and 1.5 up to paying 55 or 60, well, I mean, if I had to pay a hundred for like a steady 60 up or 60 down, no, what the, I, I forget what I even said now. L let me look back 180 down and 30 to 60 up. Like, like if I hope, I hope T-Mobile is not listening and, and I'm not sponsored by T-Mobile, but if I had to pay a hundred bucks a month for that, and it was just like consistent, reliable, good to go, always at least 30 up, always at least a hundred down, I would probably pay a hundred bucks a month for that. So th they, they've got me as a customer. I, I wanted to give it like a nice, if I go a two hour stream tonight and I don't drop a single frame, my last like five weeks of streams, I, I was streaming at 720. And I was dropped, like, I dropped, by the end of my stream, I dropped, like, 5% of my frames for the whole thing, which is absurd. Like, thousands and thousands and thousands of frames. Uh, crazy. Over, under 20 cases of Japanese 151 cases you're going to buy from the reprint. Um, it depends on how low it goes. If the price bottoms at 50, way over 20 cases. If, if the price bottoms at 100 under 20 cases if the price bottom somewhere in between maybe around 20 cases like i feel like the way that i'm gonna navigate this and i'm not even 100 percent sure i know that p 
PK went live. And he talked about how, it, like, I, I didn't read the Pokey Beach article. I, I used to read Pokey Beach all the time, and I, I don't really read it anymore. But, um, I don't know if it's the full-fledged reprint. I I have a couple contacts that I, I deal with in Japan that get me product. And I know that a lot of them are lowering their prices and, and yada yada. But according to him, and maybe this is a tactic by him, maybe this is a tactic by some of them, to sell their stuff over the next month. Like, how are they going to sell their stuff in April? If they tell all their buyers that, oh yeah, there's a confirmed reprint for May. So, so maybe they're being like, oh, well, we, we might be getting one, but we might not. Just in hopes that I buy some today, right? I don't really know if it's that happening. I don't have like an amazing relationship with, with any, I have a small relationship with a few people. But uh, but yeah, if it bottoms at like 120, if it bottoms at 110, 120, like I might not end up with any if if I'm expecting it to go like to 100 and it never does. Like it, it's hard to say. There is, I, I always say this, but uh, Dan up on the fence. There is an amount of 151 they could reprint that would crash the box to 40. Do I think 151 will be 40 anytime in the next two years? Not really, but like, could it be? Yes. So s say it goes to 100. Say Retro hits me up and he says, Dan, I got 151. Uh, I, I can do cases for uh, what 12 box cases for 151, right? Because because it, it's not a it, it's not a um a specialty set. So I believe it's 12 box cases. If he says I can do cases for for 1,200 bucks, 100 bucks a box, I would probably say retro. Get me give me five cases, and we'll start there. And then if it goes to 80, and he's like Dan, I I can get you thousand dollar cases, 80, 50, 85, whatever that would be. I'd probably be like, ah, give me another five or ten cases. Hey, Dan, I, I can get you six hundred dollar cases of one fifty one now. Okay, get me, get me fifteen of them. Maybe, maybe get me twenty of them. I can get you five hundred dollar case. Like, d depending on how crazy it gets, depending on how low it goes, like that's a set that I would just keep. I I'm not gonna say if it goes to zero, I will buy every one. People say that all the time. I don't really believe it, but I, I could fully justify putting 50k into it over the next year if the prices were right so i'll just i won't i won't do that 50k all at once i won't take uh 500 boxes at 100 dollars. i'll just take 50 to 100 boxes and then i'll take 50 to 100 and then i'll take i'll dollar cost average down essentially um selling the whole way L like if i buy them at 100 hopefully i'm getting them to where like promoted listings ebay whatever daily deals i might be able to make Two, three bucks a box margin. Sell slowly. Sell very slowly. Uh, five or ten boxes at a time. Or maybe a case at a, at a time. Whatever. Wh whether I'm doing cases or boxes. But yeah, it'll be so much by feel. It's impossible to say. I have a question. Where are Walrus and Panga? They're probably on Nick's eBay Live. 70 a box confirmed for 151. Is it 70 today? I don't think it's 70 today. But if it were 70 today, I would probably say retro... 840 for a case. Give me give me seven cases today. L let me put five and a half grand into it. And then maybe maybe I would go like 10 grand. If it were 70 today, which I don't think it is, I think it's still over a hundred. I would probably go like 10 grand into it today. Because theoretically, from 70, theoretically, you can only drop another 50% or so, right? Worst case scenario. So I would probably put like 10 grand into it if it were 70 today. Nick, Nick's been working Walrus uh, too hard. We haven't seen him much lately. If I see you at New Jersey Collecticon, will you sign my Ethernet cable? Absolutely, I will. <laughs> there, there's, there's Ponga. Appreciate you, Ponga. I'm happy to call you a friend as well. <laughs> Do an entire stream zoomed in on your mouth. <laughs> see, 1080p is, is that's way too many pixels. I, I'm actually going to be doing um, wh wh what's it called again? That program that, that Pokey and E made a video about recently, Opus. Actually, John, Pokemon Radar, told, told me about Opus like several months ago, and I just haven't done anything with it yet. And I see Brian's been pumping out some content with it. I know James, just a couple days ago, started using it too. But if Opus is taking a 720p live stream of me that's lagging, missing frames, all this stuff, like it's probably not going to be great. I probably should be streaming in 1080p if I'm going to have Opus, like, clip it down into a short. So it's probably better that I'm doing 1080p for, for Opus-wise. Opus 
do you have a grocery list? If so, what is on it right now? So people are going to love to hear that milk is on it. We're, we're completely out of milk in this household, which is not something that's typical. So milk, what else is on it? I, I actually, we, we use, um, we use Walmart pickup a lot because we, we go a decent amount now. Through the pandemic, we were using uh, Walmart pickup. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't know. I'm, I'm going to look at my active list right now. Milk, butter. The wife has Nutella on there. <laughs> We've got a bunch of fruits. We've got those little yogurt smoothie drink things. We've got laundry detergent, toilet paper. We, we've got the basic stuff. We've got some Ziplocs. N nothing too extreme. Uh... Salsa, we're out. We're out of salsa. <laughs> Just restocking on some of the uh, the essentials that are out of stock. Um, banana has best Japanese prices on the market right now. What's banana? I have bought through Retro. I, I've not only bought through Retro, but I have bought through Retro. Oh, Panga's in a bidding war for a house. Dang. Um, let's see. Can you plan? <laughs> can you talk about what you plan to do differently for 2024's lawn, considering the failure of 2023? If if you're referencing the picture of my smoker that had a reflection of my driveway, so my driveway is getting paved in, in the next few months. Sometime in May or June, maybe my driveway will be getting paved. Uh, Reggie Cards, he, he cropped and he looked at the um the reflection in my smoker window. The, the the smoker glass, it looked like a patchy lawn, but it was actually like a grassy driveway. It was a grassy gravel driveway that will be blocked up next year. So my lawn is actually like, I don't do anything to deserve it or anything to like make it happen. My, my, my neighbor is out there all the time, like picking, hand picking each individual dandelion, spraying all the dandelions, doing all that stuff. And then meanwhile, my kids are, are picking up all the dandelions making wishes, blowing the dandelion seeds everywhere. The wind actually goes like the direction of that specific neighbor. So he, he must, um, he must not like my lack of a, of a lawn care regimen. Um, <laughs> then when you bought your house, did you buy full ask under over if over or under how much over under what year? So I bought my house in 2019. It was a short sell. So I, I made an offer in I made an offer in May of 2019, I want to say, and I didn't close on it until November. It was actually really stressful. Uh it was a long-term thing and it was crazy cuz like they were asking high to mid ones. They they were asking high to mid ones and I came in 5% under. Like I was really close. But when I toured it, it was a dump. Like it, it was a wreck. Uh, the 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 back garage was full of a bunch of garbage. The front garage was full of a bunch of garbage. A lot of the rooms were. The master bathroom had had a leak into the kitchen ceiling, so they tore out the master bath, and they must have ran out of money because they never refinished it. The the pool was shot. They had an above ground pool that was just shot. Had to be tore out. So when I bought it, after we closed, I, I had delivered here like a 30 yard dumpster, I believe it was. And we filled it. Like my dad brought his loader here and he crushed it down multiple times. We were doing some uh, landscaping type things with, with the loader. Uh, so the loader was here anyways. But we crushed that 30 yard dumpster down several times and, and we filled it, filled it, filled it. There was a room in the basement, uh, a former bedroom. There, there was a leak in, in one of the pipes, and and it leaked all under. Actually, it was it was the condensate drain from the furnace. It, it like rotted out. They had like a copper pipe for that for whatever reason. It rotted out, so all the all the condensate, which is like acidic water, if anyone knows what a, well like furnace condensate is, it's like slightly acidic water was running under the wall into the bedroom, the illegal bedroom that did not have an egress that was in the basement. So we we tore out a whole room. We tore out two bathrooms. One was already tore out. So two and a half bathrooms my house has. We, we three new, well, two and a half new bathrooms. One was already tore out. So that, they saved us that part. But we, um, we painted every room, new light fixtures in every room. We did all new appliances. We did fully two and a half new full bathrooms. Uh, we did quite a bit. I, I want to say I put about 40 grand into it. But, but uh, 
I, I lost train. Uh, I, I lost track of where I was going with that. I put in the offer on the short sale. So, so the way it works with the short sale, you have to be agreed upon by the seller, but then the bank has to agree on it as well. Because what is happening with a short sale, the the seller owes more than they're selling it for. So, so say they owed two hundred grand, but the market price of the the house was only mid mid to high ones. So they listed it mid to high ones. I offered ninety five percent of that, and they said no. They, they literally like they didn't counter. So it was listed here. I offered here w within five percent, and they said no. It took them five months to say no. And I'm just doing the math. I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like high high one hundreds. It took them five months to even answer. The amount of money they lost in that five months is almost more than the differential of like what I offered. So I, I, I called my um I called my uh my my buyer's agent and I'm like, what do they mean no? Like, are they gonna counter? What's the number? How, how do we get this deal done? And he's like, oh, I, I didn't really know. Like, what do you mean? We've been waiting five months, we want this house. And it was like five grand. It was almost coming up to the full ask, but not quite. So, so maybe I offered like 7% under, and then I ended up coming up to pay like 2% under. But it blew my mind that they took five months to say no, they didn't counter, and then my, my buyer's agent was just gonna let it let let it die. It's like, what are you what are you talking about? So I'm I'm like, no, find out what the number is. Like they did all this math for five months. Pro probably they did nothing for five months, and then for five minutes, one person sat down and did the math, and they're like, no. I asked them what it was gonna take, and then yeah, I, I paid it. So I bought it for like two percent under ask, but it was like then I put forty grand into it. Forty grand cost. So myself, my dad, my grandpa a little bit, my, my wife, my, a couple of my buddies, a lot of people helped me like, like pay and, and just do a bunch of stuff. We did a little bit of, uh, well, the bathrooms in total, the two and a half bathrooms in total. We, we did some other stuff. We, we did like, uh, we, we knocked out part of a wall. We put in like a little bar thing there that goes from the dining or from the kitchen to the living room. We did a decent amount of stuff and, and I put like 40 grand into it. So... Once it was all said and done, it was probably worth like two and a quarter, two fifty. According to Zillow today, it's worth a lot more than I think it is. But like, I, I guess I just use a conservative number to, to be safe. I, I don't know exactly what it'd be worth. I'm not intending to sell anytime soon. But but it says like mid high twos according to to Zillow. Um, maybe maybe that's true. Uh. Got a bit 30K over these days. People have no grasp on money anymore. Yeah, so for me, it was like, it was a very non-desirable thing. It was like a lot of work, which to a certain flipper, like like to the right person, to a contractor who who rents out houses, who, who remodels and flips houses. Like it, it was definitely a, a, a handyman special. I, I think they call it. But it worked out perfect for me because it was like a diamond in the rough. You just had to pull out 30 yards, of tri 30, like literally 30 yards Tons. I, I think it weighed, because you pay by weight on the dumpsters. I think it weighed three tons. I think it weighed three tons when it was done. So three tons in a 30-yard dumpster. I paid several hundred dollars after all the manual labor of, like, taking it out. I did get, um, because my dad brought his dump truck, and we filled that with a load for, for scrap. We scrapped all the aluminum from the, from the pool. There was a decent amount of scrap here, too. So we did do a little load of scrap. Probably got a few hundred bucks in scrap. Owed several hundred dollars in uh in trash though too. Um, you love this house. Waited five months for the seller to respond to an offer. LOL. I would have yanked my offer after thirty days and asked if they were still living. The big thing is though. So when I made my offer, they, they weren't living there. It wasn't occupied. They, they were like, I, I think there was a divorce involved, and we were looking. The thing is, we were looking. I, I think when we made our offer. Our offer only had like a 30, 30 or 45 day time horizon on it. So we weren't like committed. We weren't financially committed. I think a lot of times when we made offers too, the deposit was only $1,000. So it's like worst case scenario, if you ever had to lose a $1,000 deposit on a multi hundred thousand dollar house, it's like, who freaking cares? Um, but uh, so, so we were like, our offer was there, but it wasn't binding. We were looking, if something else had come up, Absolutely, we would have pulled our offer. We would have bought something else, but nothing else really came up. Like most of the things that we wanted 
we're, like we wanted to spend around 200 like not much more than 200 uh if anything more most of the things we wanted were like 250 to 300 and we were able to, able to buy this like what we bought it for plus what we put into it we, we were barely over 200 and it was this house is a lot bigger a lot nicer after the money we put into it than we would have gotten for like 250 to 300,000 from what we were looking at so it uh it worked out really well uh it was a short sale i mean clo closing is ridiculous how closing takes like 60 days is just absurd it's like it's probably like 10 hours worth of work between a banker a lawyer and, and the mortgage people it's just they stretch it out over 60 days it's like why um i think the first house i ever closed on was between 50 and 60 days and that was like a normal one uh but this one was a short sale which means the bank was taking less than was owed on it so it was just that much more involved and it, it was so dumb it was so frustrating it was such a such a painful process, but I was so glad. So glad I stuck with it and it got done. So that's offer accepted. I don't know how long they take to close. N New York is New York. So New York is probably a lot slower. Like you, you could probably Google average time to close on a house by state. I want to say New York. So this is a federal thing. This is federally as of February 2019 which is the article that I brought up, 47 days. I think it varies by state. There's probably some states that do it quicker, but but yeah, like across the entire United States as of February, 2019, the average closing time is 47 days. I, I've heard of some states, I've heard of some people paying cash, they close on a house in like two weeks. Well, to offset that two weeks and to get the average up to 47 days, you gotta have some five month closings, right? <laughs> so I, I helped... um. I helped bring the average up to 47 days. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss. I'm going to try to stick with the house talk while we're, while we're talking houses. But if I missed any, I'll, I'll come back to them. Uh, 30K over Ponga is absolutely insane to me, but I also don't buy a million dollar houses like you. <laughs> In my journey to buy this house, actually, no. In my journey to buy this house, I don't think I offered on any other houses. I think this is like the first one I offered on. We looked at many. We, we looked at many. And this is the first one we offered on. Five month window to close. So the whole time we were looking, looking, looking. And we were ready to offer on something else. Pull our offer from this. But nothing else came up. And um, the first time around though, like back in 2013 when I bought my first house, I think we offered on two houses before the the third one which we bought the first one fell through because they they lied about certain things in the listing that came up in the home inspection that came up with with like other things so that one i backed out on because, because they just lied about certain things and the second one we just had our offer beat we, we threw an offer within five percent of ask and someone went like five percent over ask that was that was a nice house but it was really it was on train tracks pretty much which for some people wouldn't be a big deal, but it was on, like it was a hundred feet from train tracks and not just train tracks. It was train tracks near an intersection. So they blew the whistle every time. And I mean, I I'm sure it's one of those things that if you live by one, it just becomes like the norm. It becomes something you get used to. But when we were visiting and a train went by, it was like, man, that is loud. And we would get used to it living there. I'm sure. But like visitors, guests would never get used to it. And then my, my wife would worry about like the kids going over there and, and things like that. But uh, that was a nice house. That, that was a nice house, a nice little piece of land. We, we could have been happy there. But uh, the house we bought worked out really well in 2013. Nice little starter home. And then we, we, we are where we are today. If we had bought that house in 2013, we probably wouldn't have had to upgrade in 2019 when we did. So I, I'm glad we did what we did because this house is really nice. Um, I will, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to finish up the house questions and then I'll get into the other stuff. Ask the question about price and now I know what light fixtures he has. <laughs> oh man. My, my buyer's agent was not great. 
I really liked my first buyer's agent back when I bought one in 2013. My second one w was not good. Uh, not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I used the buyer's agent. I think I just used the listing agent. I can't remember, to be honest. Um, the Ponga's renting. Lease ends in four weeks. I, I think... Why did you sell your first house and not rent it out? So, I contemplated. I actually... I tried the whole for sale by owner thing first. And I didn't get any hits, really. I mean, I had a couple people come look, and it didn't, whatever. Uh, I ended up listing it through an agent. But uh, it sold during the pandemic, too. So I, I was very happy to get it sold when I did. But even before the pandemic happened, I, I just, I, I made decent money. My wife made good enough money. Like, as a, as a combined household, we made good enough money that I, I didn't really, I wasn't at a point in my life where I wanted to be a landlord. We were actually working on getting pregnant with our second kid. So we knew a second kid was coming on the horizon. We were trying to move into a new house. Uh, Pokemon was not yet blasting off. But like, I didn't think my time was best spent. There were actually, um, there were a lot of things coming up on that house. Like, like not things that weren't disclosed, not things that would come as a surprise to the buyers. But it needed a new roof, like immediately. It, I, I was very happy to have sold it, not having to put a roof on it. It needed to be resided very soon. Like the siding was pretty shot, the roof was pretty shot. Structurally, there were things that were wrong in the house that I fixed while I was there. But like the fact that they were so wrong when it was built was just kind of concerning. Uh, among other things, like I, I just didn't want to be a landlord at the time, and I was much happier to just get that amount of capital to put onto the principal of the next house and pay that off as quick as possible. Again, short sale. Short sales on average. Let me look up average short sale closing time. So after the buyer secured six to 12 weeks average, after approval, of the so they're saying six to 12 weeks plus 30 days. So, so one and a half to three months plus 30 days. Very, very wide ranges. W with a short sale, everything goes out the window. When did you start saving up for a house? I'm 25 living in an apartment. I didn't necessarily like start saving up for a house specifically. Uh, I graduated college at 21. I live with my parents. I, I lived at home for, I guess everyone lives at home, right? I, I live with my parents for, um, for two years after, after graduation. My, my girlfriend at the time, current wife, she was still in college, so it's like, I'm, I might as well just live with my parents. I'm just going to be working, and she's out of town. And So year one, living with my parents, I paid off my student loans. Year two, I saved up a down payment. And two years later, I, I bought a house. Uh, so yeah, I mean, where I live, my down payment was like a, a, a full 20% down payment. My first house I bought was $114,000. So, so $25,000 was a down payment. These days... I mean, these days you can still buy a house for low mid $100,000 where I live. I mean, a small starter home. Uh, a lot of a lot of places that house would be six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars though. Move out of those places and, and live somewhere in the woods away from people. I feel like I'm living on a different planet here in 200k for houses in Canada, Ontario. You can't get anything half decent for under 600k now. Most decent subdivision houses are 800,000 to a million. Move like I, I don't want to be where all those people are. Move away from them. <laughs> Supply and demand. There you go. Move to Lowell, Indiana. 45 minutes to Chicago. Yeah, go to the cornfields. Go where people aren't. Like, especially if you're a Pokemon business, move where people aren't because there's a post office everywhere. <laughs> closed on my house literally March 20th, 2020, and then the world collapsed. I Yeah, I closed on this one on November. I closed on my sale... So, so for a, a short period, I was paying two mortgages. I closed on my buy on November something, 2019. I closed on my sale in like mid-late March, like probably right around then. Uh, we, we finished fixing up my house in mid-February because we had a Super Bowl party. Like our, our first get-together at the house, like our housewarming party was a Super Bowl party, actually. Um... 
Yeah, two week closing. I I've heard of those, but like those are very atypical around me. Dan didn't want to be a landlord because he couldn't further his fisherman propaganda BS. I've said this many times, but like if you look at my portfolio, my dad's portfolio, and my grandpa's portfolio. We have a reasonably balanced portfolio between the three of us. Like the amount of cardboard I have in inventory, the amount of like, not, not, it's a crazy amount, but like crypto and my, my dad is all real estate, almost all real estate. My grandpa is almost all individual stocks. And then I'm, I'm a majority, like my, my business inventory, Pokemon cards. And then, uh, a high minority is S P 500 index funds. But, um, if I had gone too heavy into real estate, the overall portfolio between me, my dad, and my grandpa would just be way too skewed to real estate. But more seriously, the things I said earlier. Yeah, J James accidentally re-uploaded the video from like a year old as if it was a new upload in instead of um, instead of unprivating it. You ever thought about being a landlord? Couldn't imagine renting something out unless it was a known person prior, but that may have its downsides. So almost my whole life, my, my dad has owned a rental property and I've seen the dark sides of, of what that can be. My dad right now is going through a, a potential foreclosure with one of his tenants. And uh, it, it was like a rent to own thing. So, so more than just a, a, a renter, it was like a rent to own. It was like he was holding the mortgage on, on a property. And I, I've seen the downside. The upside is great. Like, like he's definitely had some good flips. He, he'd usually buy a fixer upper and then he, he, he'd fix it up rent it out for a few years. Maybe he'd even live in it for a couple of years because then you get the um, the ability to sell it. If you've lived in it for two years, primary residence, then you can sell it with no capital gains. House hacking, some people call it. But uh, someday maybe, but like, I'm not super keen on it. There are so many places in this country where you can buy a house for $200,000 and a lot of them are really nice. Like pe people say there's nothing to do I don't do anything. Like, like, what do these people do? They go to the bars every, like, is it the bars every night? Is it like, like, I, I go to a convention a few times a year. I might go to a Rangers game. Once a year, I might go to a Jets game here or there. Like, what are these things that, that, that there is to do that, that I can't do where I'm at? Um, one, I don't want to do them anyway, so I'm not missing out. But like, what are you actually doing in these cities that, that you can't do out in the woods? I don't want to do them, but like, I don't even know what they are. What, what do people do? I don't even know what people do. <laughs> um, stamp box promos or SPY? SPY. <laughs> um, Texas has new builds, four bedrooms, two floors, 200 to 275K. There you go. <laughs> Let me, um... Let me scroll back and make sure I don't lose any questions now. I'm, I'm going to catch up. I think we did most of the, most of the house stuff now. Um, MP Pokemon hasn't bought a booster box since Next Destinies, but he'd go hard on some 151 at 50. Yeah, if it goes down to 50, I'd go pretty hard on it too. Is it better to stay at the specified Collecticon Hotel or the closest hotel? Usually the specified Collecticon hotel is like right there. So I, I would always go towards like pay a little extra and, and be physically connected to the convention center. If the convention center is 15 minutes away from the recommended hotel, that is not ideal. And most people will still go recommended. I'm quite sure. But if you could go walkable over the recommended, that's going to be drivable. Like I would lean that way. But if they're both going to be a drive anyways, it's like I might still go recommended because that's where most people are going to be hanging out. So the point I made against needing to be in the city where everyone is, when I'm at uh, one of the one of the four weekends throughout the year that I decide to go to a convention, I want to be in the thick of it where the people are. But 99% of my life otherwise, I want to be in the woods away from people. Like, I don't know what you all do together in these big cities. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be doing it. Once a year, I'll come watch the Jets play. Once a year, I'll come watch the Rangers play. But like, random Monday night, random Wednesday night, what are you doing? I'm watching Frozen with my kids. I I'm singing I'm singing Let It Go at the top of my lungs with my daughter. Like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, I'm losing my voice a little bit because like, I've, I've actually had like a head cold the last two days. Um... But I was singing Frozen in the car on the whole drive home from where we went to uh, 
met up with some family and had some pizza and wings. I'm late. Have we talked about Mercari yet? Open Reddit and there are a lot of posts about it. Thought they would be happy about zero fees, but guess force returns and force managed payments are bad. Um, I, I actually see Pokey Any in here too, Brian. Um, so I said on one of Brian's videos, Brian made a video about uh, the whole Mercari thing, zero percent. I think paying twelve percent to eBay is better than paying zero percent to Mercari. The amount of buyers that they get, like Brian, the, the following that he's generated through social media, all the um search engine optimization, he is the exception. The rule for, for the majority of people is that eBay will get you a buyer pool that you can't find elsewhere. eBay will earn eBay will earn you a premium that you can't find elsewhere unless you do all the legwork. Like like Brian has made great videos talking about what he did, how he did it. I think what he did is replicable, but most people will expect the outcome without putting in the work that Brian put in to, to make that happen. So if you're going to put in that work that, that he did, and if you're going to get the results, like put in the work, like not just the effort, but like w with the w with the skill that, that he had doing it, um, clearly it worked for him. Like just because you put in as much time, it, it might not, you might not be as good as it. You, you might not get, I don't know how much of it was luck, how much of it is skill, obviously some amount of it for all of us, but uh, people will just frequently expect the outcomes without doing any of the stuff that led to it. So overall, I would say most people are best selling paying 12% to eBay, 15, 12 to 15% to TCG player and paying 0% on Mercari. Cause part of it too is I think kind of like Comsi. Comsi only charges like 5% selling fees, but they, they charge like a 10, 10% payout fee. So, so you can sell on uh, Comsi for only 5%. But then when you go to actually take your money out, you get hit for 10% more. So it's 15%, just 15% a different way. Being out of milk is a crime, absolutely. So, so some of these comments are way back. Um, <laughs> we use Charmin Essentials, I believe is what we use. The, the wife sets all that. What car did you sell to pave your driveway? A lot of them, a lot of them. My, my driveway is 5,000 square feet. My driveway is 5,000 square feet. I I'm not advocating for anything. I'm not saying anything about what the guy who's doing my driveway is doing. But I will say that it is a 20% discount if I pay in $100 bills compared to if I swipe a credit card. So you know I'm paying with $100 bills. <laughs> um, Pristine 10 CGC Dan promos available when? I, um, I will do something with these, but nothing yet. I have plans. I have a couple different ideas. I'll let I'll let everyone know with a lot of notice when when it happens. Appreciate you, Ponga. Tells people the gift memberships when he didn't gift memberships. Man, what a, what a guy that Ponga. <laughs> um. Have you watched Settle's new Nightmare Mode series starting to get pretty wild? I didn't see this week's yet. I, I don't know if this week's has come out. But yeah, I, I love all the series that he's put out recently. He um he is he is killing it content-wise. I, I did watch his last one where, where he got the rune crossbow, I think. With, or maybe that was two ago. But I, I'm really looking forward to to how that goes. He, he's He's insane. I've bought zero ghastly ARs. I've really not been buying that much. I, I've been trying to behave... While I'm on nights right now, I'm really trying to like not buy much. I actually just bought a couple things on Rare Candy for the first time. The only things I'm trying to buy right now are like eBay vault flips. I'm not really trying to buy, aside from Celebrations Charizards. Um, th these just came in in the past week or so. Like, the the one meme play is the only play I'm trying to make right now. Because it just, it, it doesn't relent. It, it doesn't stop. I, I just sent 50 to PSA the other day. Here are a bunch more that I need to look through that should be probably another 40 or 50 to go. Um, starting by the summer, I'll be doing a lot more sourcing again. Hopefully when I have eBay live streamers and stuff too for the grading misses. Um, let's see. Talking about house locations again. After my So Trow says, after my infinite success over the next years of flipping Watsi collections, and investing in the highest level sealed investment in one piece in Pokemon, how much do I need to start renting out like five to 10 homes? Around me, I, I've actually been to like, um, I've been to tax auctions 
with my dad before. He, he's bought houses through tax auctions where the houses are literally like the houses are so run down. The houses are so not worth it for anyone that the owner of them, the, even the bank at times is allowing them to go for taxes. No, normally what will happen, like, like say you have a $200,000 house that you let get run down and you owe 180 grand on it. The bank is not going to let that house go for taxes because they have $180,000 into it. So they're going to foreclose on it. They might have a shortfall, like you might have to go bankrupt, whatever. But I, I've seen houses sell at auction for, for 5, 10, 20, 50 grand. I mean, I, I've seen houses sell for $500 at auction because they have crazy things going on. I mean, so, some houses you would not be wise to take for free. Some of them need that much work. But uh, yeah, so depending on where you live, depending on how handy you are, if you're talking about like house hacking, flipping, like fixing them up, living in them while you fix them up, living in them for two years and then doing the next one and then doing the next one. I know people who've done that. My, my dad, to an extent, has done that. And he's done really well with it over the past 30 years that I remember. Um, the woods is goaded for sure. Good internet. Like literally two miles down the road from me. I'm on a dead end road. Two miles down the road from me, there's Spectrum Internet. There's Spectrum Internet that's probably... 250 down and, and 50 up or something. I don't even know what Spectrum Internet is these days, but we don't have fiber here. Like 99.9999% of people do not need fiber internet. Like people pay. My, my grandparents got talked into by the Spectrum people having like 250 megabits down and 25 megabits up. It's like, grandma, you guys watch Netflix on one TV at a time at most. Other than that, you play your, like, she, she plays some, like, slot game on some website. Not with real money, just with fake coins. But, um, the amount of internet that, mo like, in my house, I was actually thinking about it today. Because the new T-Mobile thing I have, it says on it how many devices are connected. Today, as of right now, I have this, and I have my, um, my PC. So, two items are connected. If I switch over to this fully, it'll be, we have two switches. My son's and mine, and my daughter will probably get one eventually. So two switches, two tablets, two smartphones, two PCs. We have my work PC, and then we have like a media PC and PC for other things. This one's 100% business. Um, we have two laptops, so we're up at 10 now. We have one smart TV. We have, did I say two cell phones? Two cell phones that will eventually be four cell phones. We have probably at least, we have the robot. I have the robot card sorter. That's a device. The, the tablet that goes with the robot. Um, I, I guess that's just one device though. Or maybe it's two. I don't know how that works. But we have, and then we have stupid stuff too. Like we have some stupid stuff. I have like a grill thermometer that hooks up to my Wi-Fi. We, we probably have 20 Wi-Fi devices. I think I have some Wi-Fi thermometers that I can look at from an app. <clears throat> oh yeah, my, I have a security system that goes on Wi-Fi. It has a backup with like cell service, but but it uses Wi-Fi primarily. So we probably have 20 devices that go on our internet. And we were getting by for the past three years with 15 megabits down and one and a half megabits up. And, and we use Disney Plus and Netflix. Our kids are on our tablets. Our, our phones are on the internet all the time. Like we use the internet crazy amounts. And we get by with 15 megabits down. And, and people think they need 50, 500, 1,000, like 1 gigabit. Like pe people are just crazy and have no concept of, of how any of that works. And they just pay for way more than they need. <laughs> I mean, a lot of places, their lowest one is like way more than you need. So you just take the lowest one and that's all you can do. You can't go lower than that. But thoughts on buying... BS would be brilliant stars and lost origin from PC at full retail when boxes and cases are both selling over. If you're immediately flipping to make margin, there's probably not much margin there, but it's a play. If you're buying it anyways, it's like, yeah, buy, buy it at the cheapest, buy it at the cheapest outlet, right? But if you're buying that solely for hold five years and make money, I feel like there's better plays than buying those at 160 than, but, but, it's it's not terrible if you've got to be in Pokemon. I don't know. Let me scroll down to see if there's any, like, up-to-date chat that I can talk about. 
like, we don't need to turn this whole thing into, uh, you, you probably pay for too much internet, but 75 bucks a month for a gigabit, I'm, I'm paying 60 for, for 200. So you're paying better than me. No, I don't care how much you're downloading. You probably don't need gigabit. Like, inle unless you're doing crazy things, like occasionally I'll, I'll uh, download a video to, to watch or whatever. And occasionally I'll have to wait like uh, on my former 20 meg. Cause like most um most videos and stuff are probably like a gigabyte. That's like that's like if if you wait thirty minutes, I, I don't know. We we don't need to dive too far down that. Like a lot of people just pay for a lot more than they actually need. Ponga need fiber if you want to compete on Modern Warfare three. See there, you just need um you you need the the latency, low latency ping. You don't need gigabit. Like you definitely don't need gigabit for playing any any video games. The the more relevant thing is ping ping latency whatever you want to call it renting a car for the rest of your life is better value than buying a car that can last 10 plus years um it, it all depends on the cost it, it all depends like the whole rent versus buy thing i don't know what the deal is but like i'm i'm a millennial i think right i, I was born in 1990 going on 34 there are so many people it seems like maybe it's just because like i, I read reddit a lot M maybe the reddit crowd is not indicative of, of my age bracket as a whole but so many dummies on reddit are like landlords are leeches and they provide no value and renting is is theft you should you should always buy i just had to put in a, a multi thousand dollar furnace i've got to put on a multi several thousand dollar roof soon at some point i got to do a couple floors in my house like and a lot of people move a lot of people bounce around a lot of people don't stay in the same place for more than five years so renting has its place both with vehicles like leasing is essentially renting in a different way um but some people are only buying makes sense renting is just always throwing away money well i own this house outright i have no mortgage i'm still essentially renting it because i pay 450 bucks a month every month increasing with inflation for the rest of my life they call it property taxes uh town taxes and school taxes those will never go down those will only go up and as of today it's about 450 bucks a month so you, you never really own it you never really own it you buy i i own all my vehicles i all of our two household vehicles we own in full no no loan we still pay 50 bucks every every or maybe it's not that much i, I forget what new york state inspections are but all the maintenance on them all the um the inspections and the registration not that it's a lot of money but like you 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 own very little in life you really own very little <laughs> um where i live though in new york man you're talking about salt on the roads like where i live the 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 salt really gets to it my um th this is an s21 my um my wife's car is a 2014 if we don't trade it in this year, we're definitely going to trade it in next year. But we might try to get to 2025 with it. It's 10 years old. It's starting to rust through in a couple spots. Like, it's between 10 and 12 years old. Usually, they go south real quick. They start getting body rust, and they go through real quick. Thoughts on whales buying up all these pristine 10 CGC cards? I don't know. Some of them are going for decent value, I think. Some of them are too much of a premium for I, I don't know maybe the market will pay it in the future but i never have, have thought the psa 10 premium was justified now you're putting a premium to that premium it's it's not for me i'm too broke i'm too broke i'm not, I'm not a well tadpole yeah like i i know so many people in my life that like if if, if a light bulb dies they don't know how to change a light bulb like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But it, I feel like, and maybe this is just because I was raised this way and, and I'm a very like DIY guy, but like, I don't call a plumber. I, I don't call an electrician. I, I don't call people immediately that are going to charge me 200 bucks an hour that I, I don't know like how, how, um, reputable they are. I, something goes wrong. Something breaks. I dive into it. I pull up YouTube videos. I, I start going at it. And I think you need to have a little bit of DIY sense if you're going to be a homeowner. Maybe I'm completely off. I mean, if you make enough money, I guess you can just pay anyone for anything, whatever. But um, to me, it feels like you have to have a little bit of DIY in you to justify it. Otherwise, you're just paying so much money for like stupid crap here and there. 
Oh no, is Pokemon Steven really using emojis in his titles? That That's scary. I'm, I'm gonna have to message him if he's actually doing that. Um... Let's see, let, let me let me scroll back up and make sure I didn't miss any other Pokemon questions. Th this is where I was talking about eBay versus Mercari. Facts, it's better to have more buyers than more sellers. eBay is king. eBay will sell an item a minute after listing. Most people buying on Mercari, most people buying on Facebook Marketplace, most people buying on Instagram, they will want you to discount it by 10 to 12% to what eBay is selling for. So a lot of times it's just not... Like, like people have benefited off of selling on TikTok short term, like taking advantage of all, all the, um, the, the very short lived, uh, they're, they're not going to last forever. All, all these subsidies that are going on. I'm just sticking with, with daddy eBay because they, they've been nice to me for the past 20 years. And I think they'll be nice to me for the next 20 years. We'll give 10 memberships. If you give us a date for the CGC 10 damn promo release. There's no need to gift 10 memberships. I, um, <sighs> by year end, I can't say the pristine one confidently by year end, at least one of the graded ones will be sold somehow. I have a few ideas for how I'm going to do it. Um, the buyback price, the buyback price on these will be no different from the buyback price on the raw ones. I, um, I'm not paying a graded premium buying them back. So whatever people end up paying, like the whole guarantee thing, the guarantee thing is when you buy a $24.99 raw one. I guess I'll spill a little bit of the beans. I think I'm going to do auctions only. And I might do like a fixed schedule. One is going to come out every X amount of duration. And I'm not going to grade any more in this fashion. So like, I think I have 10 PSA 10s. So the first of 10 PSA 10s will be sold on this date. I don't know what the date will be. One will be sold though before a year end. So I will commit to that. You do not have to gift 10 memberships for that because I didn't really give you what you asked for. Um, but by the end of the year, maybe it'll be one PSA 10 first to test the water. But uh, I have ideas how I'll do the auction, what I'll do with the proceeds from the auction. And uh, so we'll see, we'll see. But I, I, I've had fun with, with the promo so far and I, I intend to have more fun with them. Um. Yeah, Punga said he was going to leave and then he's still here. <laughs> Dan rambled about houses for 30 minutes, so I stayed. Um, Dan, I leased a new Tahoe today. Am I financially ruined? I, I honestly, like, I, I don't know how much you make a year. And I know this is mostly a meme question. There are, like, if I had to guess a percentage, I would say more than half of people renting a Tahoe should not be renting a Tahoe. Are you one person who should be renting a Tahoe? I I'm going to give a little, a little Dan anecdote, which I, I was so, it was so hilarious. H hilarious and sad. I, I was in my office where I used to work. I looked back out the window and in it, I saw a brand new, like a, a one or two year old pickup truck that the guy brought ben, brand new. Pickup truck, pickup truck with a bed. Pickup trucks have beds, right? So he had a, he had a dirt bike. He had the dirt bike on a trailer. The guy didn't want to scratch up his truck. The guy didn't want to use his truck as a truck. So he towed a dirt bike on like a little tiny four foot trailer that was shorter than the bed of his truck. It's like, oh my God, like, and whatever. Like it's your money, spend it how you want to spend it. But I, I, one thing that I've always found a little funny is like the people who buy trucks to commute they commute to a nine to five, like blue, uh, white collar office job. There, there will never be a toolbox in the bed of that truck. There will never be a two by four in the bed of that truck. I've, I've hauled more, um, cargo in like a sedan. I, I used to have a Mercury Sable, like an old person car. The back seats folded down. I, I, I remember when I fixed up, I, I did a little bit of work on my, my old house I bought in 2013. Man, I had, I had that thing riding on the ground. I, I put way too much weight in it. It was really stupid. But I piled up like two by 12s, like two by four by 12s, two by eight by 12s, two by six by 12s. And they went all the way to the front dash. They went all the way out the back. I had, I had the flag on them. I had them sticking up. It, uh, I should not have had as much weight in that car as I did. 
But then you got people, you got people with pickup trucks that, that won't put, because they don't want to scratch the liner. They don't want to scratch the bed. They don't want, it's like, that, that's a sedan job. Like, like each vehicle is made in over the past 10, 20 years. I, I could really, I, I think I've only got two IPAs under my belt right now. This is my third. If I was like eight IPAs deep, I would probably, if the lights were red behind me, I would probably go down a path right now. But um, I'll see if I can avoid going down the path. Greeny gifted 10. I appreciate you, Greeny. You didn't have to do that. Um, let me see if I can get that on screen. Um, but at least to me, at least to me, like I've never been a car guy. Vehicles are tools. E each tool is optimized for a certain job. Like as of right now, my household has a sedan, uh, a five-seater sedan, and uh, a six-seater uh, small SUV, compact SUV. Our next vehicle is going to be a minivan. Because we have two kids, we have a dog, we go on vacations. When we go on a vacation and I have to drop my dog off at my parents' house, my dog is like squished in the back with, with all of our luggage. She barely fits. And having a minivan, if we take her on trips, like she'll have space, the, the luggage will have space, the kids will have space. The whole soccer mom, soccer dad thing, we, we, can, we can take the kids in, the, in their friends' places. Um, using the, the vehicles as they were designed. For the utility they were designed for so many people around me at least drive these huge jacked up trucks that don't do anything they don't go off-roading they don't tow trailers they, they don't put a toolbox in the back um to, to me it's like it's their money I'm, I'm fully behind people doing what they want to do spending their money how they see fit i just see it as like a little silly and as i as, as i said a minute ago if i had to guess more than 50 percent of tahoe leasers probably shouldn't do it one because of the size like they, they just don't use it for what it is they, they could lease something way smaller and two because of the money like a lot of people are like I, i've heard of um like house poor like people will just buy all the money the um all the money that the bank will give them on a mortgage they take and to their own detriment to their own detriment like really really bad um because they'll just be like broke because of it people do that with cars too Car dealers will do cr literally criminal things. They'll they'll write up the value of the trade in. They'll, they'll do this that. They'll do some fancy footwork with the paperwork. And like m my dad actually sold a house in in mid late two thousands before two thousand eight. Some of the things they did, like what they wrote for the value of the house, the the guy had no money to put down. They just wrote up the number of the sale, and then they they pretended that uh they they basically gave the guy like thirty grand wrote up the sale of the house 30 grand so that the guy could put a down payment of 30 grand that he never had and then they give him more money to do improvements to the house like banks will do criminal things to lend people money it's actually like disgusting but people are dumb enough to take it people are dumb enough to take the rope that the bank gives them to hang themselves with and people do it all day long i know so many people that are like broke like eternally because of their car situation because of their house situation. So my anecdotes just lead me down a very sour path towards all that. That's why I, I'm so anti-debt, just like morally, fundamentally, because of the way that I've seen it like destroy people. And some of the people don't even realize it's destroying them. They're just conditioned to like consume, 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 buy it all on credit, spend more than you make, keep up with the Joneses, and it, uh, it leads to very suboptimal, like their goal is consumption. Their goal is mass consumption and they're doing it so suboptimally because every dollar you pay in interest is a dollar less consumed, right? I don't know. The, the lights aren't red because I, I screwed up my lights when I switched my internet over, but I'll fix them. I, I'll fix them. Peak, why did you lease? I know at the time that I bought mine, if you would ask me five years ago, I probably would have said I would never buy new. One of the reasons is that my dad's a mechanic, so I have a little bit of like privilege that some people don't have. If my car has a major issue, my dad is a mechanic, I can probably fix it with him. And if he can't, he knows, he is friends with several career mechanics as well. So I have access to very reputable, very skilled, experienced, long time, honest, trustworthy mechanics. Not everyone has that. So that is one reason I would have steered away from new, but like honestly, I'm doing way better today than I thought I would be five years ago, coupled with the fact that during the pandemic, when, when I bought my, what is it, a 2022 Kia Sportage, knew it was like 30, 
for me to buy like a a, a three year old with with forty fifty thousand miles, a three year old Kia Sportage with forty fifty thousand miles, at the time it was like it was like twenty two grand or something. Used cars were so high. Even to buy a one year old with ten to twenty thousand miles, it, it was like twenty six twenty seven grand. So I was paying like ten fifteen percent more to get brand new with a full ten year hundred thousand mile warranty. Um, just just given where I'm at in life now, how like. My my minivan might be new too. I'll run the comparisons. I'll look, but like, if I can buy ten years, buy new, and drive it for ten years, the way that I see it, it's two hundred and fifty bucks a month. Um, thirty grand up front to drive it for ten years. That's um that that works out to one hundred and twenty months. That's two hundred and fifty bucks a month, and it'll still be worth something to trade it in, sell it, whatever. But um, e even when I, so so my first car that I sold. I sold private because I, I, I sold it private and I bought another one private because I, I was always of the opinion like I'm going to sell it private, do it on my own, I'm going to try to sell my house on my own. But I'm like the amount of stress, the amount of issues, when I bought the Kia Sportage, I just traded my car in. Could I have gotten an extra thousand bucks selling it private? Probably. But it's like I could just sell more Pokemon cards. and. It's like, let the car salesmen make their money. I'm going to make my money doing my job. They're going to make their money doing their job. I'm not made for this. And I, I don't like dealing with the people, all, all the tire kickers, all the time wasters, all the lowballs. I deal with enough on eBay on Pokemon cards. I don't want to deal with them on cars too. So if I lose a thousand bucks trading my car in over what I could have gotten, theoretically, maybe spend in two hours trying to sell it. If I knew I could sell it in two hours and make a thousand bucks, obviously do that. But I might spend two weeks spend 10 hours and not sell it. So then it's like, oh man, was it actually worth it anymore? Given where I'm at financially, given where I'm at in my life, I've definitely loosened up more on some spending and it's easier to justify just where I'm at in life. I don't like buying depreciating assets outside of cardboard, plus the wife likes a new car every three years. Oh man, yeah, I mean, that doesn't make much sense though. So if you're buying a car and selling it three years later versus if you're just leasing it for three years, functionally, it's a pretty similar thing. Depending on the make of the model, depending on the time, like there are times where you, you could make out better buying and then selling. Sometimes the lease will get you better off. Sometimes leases will be way worse off if you get hit with penalty miles, if you get hit with like penalty damage and stuff like that. But but either way, you're like if you're leasing in perpetuity, like if you have the money and that's how you want to spend it, absolutely fine. But but it's functionally very similar to just buying and selling every three years. Like you are eating the core depreciation. Like even though you're not buying it, you're paying for all that three years of depreciation on every vehicle. Um, you're still you're still paying for all that depreciation. You're not technically owning that depreciation, but you're paying in it through through rentals. So it's the same thing. Um. Only issue with the place I want to move, I either choose cellular tower, internet, or small company fiber. L like where I live, w which maybe people from big cities have issues with that. Um, Spectrum internet is like multiple hundreds down and 50 plus up. Is that like too slow? Like, I don't know anyone that that's too slow for. Pe people think it's too slow. People get sold on this whole fiber thing. People get sold on this fiber thing. And then they like, they play old school RuneScape and they watch Netflix and they and they watch Disney Plus and they, and they do nothing else and they think they need a gigabit down. Um Like like you cannot universally say renting makes more sense, buying makes more sense. It, it always comes down to the individual, the zip code, the the specific circumstances. General you can make generalizations. Generally, if you're going to be somewhere for more than 10 years, it probably makes sense to buy. Generally, if you're going to be like under three years, it almost certainly will make sense to just rent. There are times in the middle where it could go one way or the other. Um, depends on so many factors. And then some of it is just like your, like, like your personality. Like, like I enjoy the thought of me owning a piece of property, even though I just rent it from, I have to pay all my taxes and stuff. I enjoy being able to, to change things as I see fit. I enjoy not having to call somebody and ask if I can hang a picture on the wall or like, 
I, I don't know. I, I don't like, I, I like not having to worry about a deposit down the line. And I just like having something be mostly mine. I mean, I'm sharing it with the state, with, with the school tax uh, jurisdiction, but. 10 years ago, I was paying 1400 in rent. Last year, I was paying 3100 This year, it would have been 3500 if I didn't move. Same general area, same size house over the years. I'm a massive proponent of owning property, but not vehicles, your situation permitting. Yeah, like where I live, my, my dad's rentals. My, my dad's rentals. He, he rents a whole house that's like 800 square feet. It's like a small starter home type thing. I think the whole house... Maybe, maybe it's not everything included. Like maybe they have to pay trash, water, uh, uh, cable and all that. Some of them, he has all that included and some he doesn't, but I want to say he has that whole property. Like it's a whole house with a big garage under a grand a month. Um, plus, plus utilities, I guess. But he, he has a two unit, like, like a duplex, I guess over under. He has a duplex. That's like, I think each unit is a little over a thousand a month, but, but not substantially. And those are like multi, multi hundred square foot. I don't know exactly how many, five, six hundred square foot, couple bedroom, maybe, maybe one bedroom. I don't know. But uh, around me, I, I could like what I'm in now would be a couple thousand a month for, to, to rent it. But like if you look at everything as a whole picture, uh, if, if you want to get into the nitty gritty of like I paid this whole house off, which financially speaking, historically was dumb. Given the like hi historic uh, past performance doesn't indicate future, blah, blah, blah. But uh, when I paid off my house, I knew it was probably going to pan out to be suboptimal financially. Given that I had a 3% mortgage and now mortgage rates are like 6%, 7%. It, uh, like I, I could have put that money in a, in a uh, T-bills and I could have been making 5%, 6%. So in hindsight, it was a lot worse than I thought it would have been. But the freedom, the, the, the weight off my shoulders, the freedom of not having that monthly payment, of owning my house as, as best I can, still having to pay taxes. Um, but that's a lot of opportunity cost. In an alternate reality, I could have had that couple hundred thousand dollars in the markets. The market year to date is up 10%. So, so that's $20,000 that I didn't get in S&P 500 gains, right? But, but it also could have gone the other way. The market could have gone down 30%. And real estate uh, rates could have been flat. I mean, it could have been 3% for the next 20 years and I had a 15 year mortgage. So you never know. Um, if you own a car for a thousand a month, you good, meaning you bought it for 10,000 and it lasts for 10 or more years, better deal than leasing. Dan, let's be honest, you hold the flashlight for your dad. <laughs> depending on what it is, um, depending on what it is. But usually, yeah, I, I mean, I am, I am totally, same with my YouTube channel. I am totally fine to tell people what I am uh, capable of, what, what I have done, what I have not done. I, I don't put on like a show. Like what, what I show and say is what I actually do. I talk the talk. I walk the walk. I, uh, I, I'm very comfortable saying what I, uh, what I do and don't do. I leased my last two vehicles and then the cars boomed. CarMax bought out the leases and I made like 15K in profit. It's the only time I've ever made money on cars. Similarly, I mean, you could have done similarly well, I'm assuming if, if you had bought those and they, they would have, I mean, I know people who bought a car, drove it for five years and then they're like, they sold it for what they paid um, because of the whole pandemic thing. Like the exception, not the rule. Yeah, I knew what you were saying. Thousand a year, not a month. Yeah, thousand a month for 10 years. That'd be a $120,000 car. N not advised for most people. How do you feel about people saying it's easier to get tens when PSA goes up a certain number, like buying up nines to resend when they go to nine X or, um, historically speaking, people say it's harder. So historically speaking, like I've been around since the two sir eras, when the four sir era came, they kind of skipped over the three sir. When the four sir era came, two certs all sucked. They graded way harder. Fives came. Now they're talking about how fours suck. Seven, eights and nines are good. Like all, all, all like. Grading is just consistently inconsistent. I, I don't believe, like, look at the card, buy the card, buy strong nines, resend. Don't blindly buy nines, wait for the first digit to go up one, and then think that they're all going to be tens. That, that's what I would say on that. Buy the card. What are your top three home DIYs, do's and don'ts? Um, I mean, one would be don't DIY if you have no idea what you're doing. I, I am very privileged to have a dad and uncle 
many people I can consult with. I, I have decades of experience working alongside holding the flashlight for my dad. I've um I've replumbed a whole house. I I've rewired nearly a whole house. I've I've fixed televisions. I've fixed dishwashers. I I've fixed washers and dryers. I've um I've done like just general light contracting work. I I've done a little bit of everything. So if you're comfortable with it, like none of it's that difficult. But um, don't don't go into it if you're gonna like fry yourself on your uh on your electric panel or on your outlet or whatever. If you are gonna get into an outlet, buy one of, buy one of the voltage testers. Don't don't trust your voltmeter. Don't like maybe have two of them so that you can verify. Um, always check to make sure there's no power there before you start touching stuff. You, you if your if your breakers are labeled wrong and you turn off the wrong breaker and then you go in there and you you, you touch anything that that looks shiny. We love shiny. In in Pokemon, I, I've got a shiny slug right here. Um, sh shout out to Jake Smith. We love shiny in Pokemon. So if you start pulling out an outlet, if you open your panel box, if you take the cover off your panel box, everything shiny in there. I mean, except for the ground. Like, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't advise it. But you can touch the ground wires, but don't touch anything shiny. Don't touch anything shiny behind your receptacle co receptacle covers. Don't touch anything shiny in your panel box. That that will go bad. <laughs> You only get fried once and then never again. <laughs> Will I ever make it on beer o'clock or my band because I'm more of a smoked old-fashioned guy? I think you'll make it on someday. The gifts are for Mason Berry birthday today. Happy birthday, Mason. Go show him love in Discord. Are big boy trucks still like 60k plus? Yeah, I um... I know people, again, like I said, that, that truck where the guy, he had a dirt bike, and instead of putting it in the back of his truck, like what it was made for, he towed it on a trailer. I, I sent a picture of it to my dad, and I'm like, what, what do you think about that? Um, that was probably a sixty or $70,000 truck that, that will never see a piece of lumber, that will never see a cinder block, that will never see a half quart of firewood that will never see like anything in it. It's a commuter. It commutes 10 miles each day, 10 miles each way each day, and that's all it'll ever do. It'll never tow anything. Um, lots of pickup trucks, lots of big SUVs that do that. Trading in my Tesla for the Tesla truck, Yarnay. I have no idea. Um, this is Dan's long answer saying, yes, I'm financially ruined. Do you use anything for the Tahoe? I wanted an expedition, but the wife liked the Tahoe better. I mean, could she commute in a, like, what she's buying the Tahoe for, could she do in a Malibu? That would be my first question. Malibu is less than half the price, I'm assuming. So, like, I would just lean towards a Malibu. I see a Tahoe and I say, damn, that guy has FU money. Honestly, 10% of Tahoe owners have FU money. 30, completely made up, like most statistics. 10% of Tahoe owners have FU money. 30% can swing it, but like, if they really thought about it, they probably would get more value. Like, the way that I see it, just like in Pokemon, every dollar I spend, I want to go as far as possible. Like, I really enjoy going out to eat. I, I really enjoy an experience going out to a restaurant. I really enjoy travel. I go to Disney, it costs a few grand. I get good return on that three grand. I, in, instead of spending three grand a year on a family vacation, five grand a year, six grand a year on a family vacation... I could spend an extra 6K a year in depreciation, updating my vehicles more frequently and getting bigger vehicles. Instead of having a Kia Sportage, I, I could have a Chevy Tahoe or, or uh, I, I could afford a Cadillac Escalade. But the amount of additional money that would cost me for the same utility of what the cars I buy get, I could go to Disney every year. I could go to Disney every year and my son's favorite restaurant right now is Red Lobster. We could go to Disney every year, Red Lobster every week, and I will be further ahead with a Kia Sportage over a Cadillac Escalade. So, like, that's where I put my money. It's all about what you value. So, 10% have a few money. 30%, they have enough money. They can swing it, but, like, maybe they'd get more value otherwise. Maybe they're fine. 60% of people should not have that Tahoe. My guess, my opinion, I, I don't know. Whether Peak's in that 60% or not, I don't know. I haven't seen his financials. <laughs> um... I'll have you know I fill that truck bed at least like four times per year. U-Haul rents trucks. I mean, most people like kind of like a boat, kind of like, um, kind of like a pickup truck. Know someone who has one. H have a friend who has a pool. 
have a friend who has a boat, have a friend who has a pickup truck. When you borrow, like when I borrow my dad's pickup truck uh, four times a year, I fill up the tank. If it's on a quarter tank, half tank, I fill up the tank. I, I go to Lowe's, I pick up whatever I'm picking up, and I fill up the tank. It, oh, you didn't have to do that. Well, I did it because, I mean, he uses his truck too. Like what his business is, he uses his truck. But uh, rent one or pay a buddy, pay a buddy a hundred bucks. Like you will be further ahead paying your buddy 150 bucks every time you need that truck. And he will be so happy to be paid 150 bucks. He will be subsidizing his over expenditure on his truck. <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm looking at the Kia Carnival. I, I'm a big fan of the Kia. Ten year, hundred thousand mile warranty. Come on, good value. I pitched the minivan and got shot down immediately. Yeah, I mean, why spend less and get more utility? That that wouldn't make any sense, Cole. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, I have a customer age twenty five, two hundred k student loan debt, new Camaro, new Honda, daily lives with grandma. Yeah, it, it like. I don't mean to hate on people who spend a lot of money on cars. It, it all comes down to what you value. But but I see people who I see people who struggle to get by day to day, and they they don't go on family vacations they want to go on, and they don't do X Y and Z, and and they, they they think they can't afford to get their kid that Christmas present they want to get them. They can. They just put their money in other places where at times I think a lot of people just like mindlessly without thinking. They just spend money on these certain things that we're conditioned to do. A new car every three years, uh, a bigger house, keeping up with the, all that stuff. And they're not getting the same value as if they consciously, like, I'm not about firm budgeting. You have to do X, Y, Z. You can't buy avocado toast. You can't buy lattes. I, I want to do a finance channel someday. It's just about conscious spending. If you're buying a latte for $7 every morning or, or whatever frappuccino, I, I don't know, coffees. I, I don't drink coffee. But if you're going to Starbucks every day and spending 7 bucks on a coffee and you're getting value out of it relative to what else you could get for that same money, do it. Like, go crazy. Who am I to say anything? I, I, I bought all this stuff behind me. What, what did I spend? I, I spent 150 bucks on that Master Ball or 100 bucks on that Master Ball. And it sells for like 400 bucks or 300 bucks, and I didn't sell it. I'm crazy. Like everyone's a little crazy. We all have our things. Um, I'm not telling anyone you can't, but, but if you think about it, like figure out exactly what that, uh, Frappuccino costs you 35 bucks a week. I mean, that's a couple grand a year. Would you rather make a coffee at home? Maybe you save an extra 50 bucks a year in gas. Cause you're not going, maybe, maybe you get to sleep an extra five minutes. You can snooze that alarm one more time. And then you go on a little weekend getaway with your family for the same $2,000 that you're spending on Frappuccinos. It's like, just consciously spend and, and like optimize your value out of your dollar spent. I, I think, well, the biggest two things we spend every day, we spend our money and we spend our time. And I, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I have it all figured out, but we, we throw away so much of both. We do not optimize well. We do not maximize well our time expenditure and our money expenditures. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to let myself get a little more loose since my finances are doing so well. But like for me personally, for my wife too, like my, my wife is on, on, on the same spot as me. We're not car people. Like like we don't need, she is definitely, she's at the point now. Like she bought that uh, 2014 Malibu before we were even engaged, I think. Yeah, she bought it before we were engaged. I was involved in the purchase. Like I helped talk at the dealer a little bit, but that was fully her. Um, and then we paid it off. We paid it like it was mostly my money, but the way that I saw it, we were engaged. It was our money then. Cause it was going to be our money six months later. So we paid it off in between engagement and marriage. Um, but she drove a brand new car for, for, I mean, 10 years. It's not brand new anymore, but it's like the same brand new car she bought 10 years ago. She is definitely getting to the point. She's probably listening right now. She's probably going to text me and I'm, I'm probably going to be in trouble. But, but she's not like a, a big consumery person. She's not like, I need to get a new car every year or I'm going to be miserable and mad at you and call you a Scrooge. But at, at 10 years now, she's definitely like, I, d I would rather get one this year than next year. I, I, because I, I was talking about it like a month ago, pretty decently. And then the, I was going to go, I had an appointment set up to go. And then she and the kids got sick. So I just canceled it. I'm like, ah, might as well wait till after tax time. I'm going to owe a bunch of money. I want to see how much money I owe and... I might still buy a car this year, but we'll see. But yeah, um, a lot of long rambles and thoughts.
I'm only on my third. Like, I'm, I'm not even buzzing yet. Uh, I, I might be buzzing by the end of the stream, but I don't know. People don't buy vehicles for practicality. They're status symbols. Duh. And it's like, if you... If you're doing it for you, like, that's fine. If you're doing it for other people, like, I, I remember as a chemical engineer, it, it was funny. Um, big on the car thing still. I drove, I drove a Dodge Intrepid, a, a 10 plus year old Dodge Intrepid when I first started at my chemical engineering job for, for the first for the first eight years of my 10 years as a chemical engineer, I drove almost the worst car in the lot. And I worked at a small facility. There was maybe only eight cars in the lot. I had the single worst car in the lot. And then b before I quit my job to go full time, like I, I was still there and I bought my new car then. So only at the very end did I not have the worst car in the lot. Um... And I knew what these people made, and I, I heard their struggles. I, I heard them talking about all their finances. I heard them talking about having to cancel this vacation because the money's not there, and the refund was lower than they thought it was going to be. The furnace broke. This like I heard how, how paycheck to paycheck a lot of these people were, but th they, they'd roll over that debt. They, they'd have their gap insurance. They'd, the dealer would do criminal things to get them in a new vehicle every three years. You, you, bet, like, you bet that would happen. Um... Uh, 2006 Camry or bust. There you go. The finance guy was like 25 and he hated me. He was trying to mark up money factor and I had him take it back down to GM's actual rate. At the end, I offered him, offered to get him hired at my company. <laughs> um. <laughs> 10,000, paid 10,000 for my SUV and it's lasted 11 years so far. Yeah, that that's great. Like, I, um, my, my first five cars were like of, uh, 1500 to 3,500 bucks and they all suited me pretty well. I banged up one of them pretty good and I continued to drive it for another year or two. Um, what's the best BMW I can buy that transports my collectibles to shows? I mean, go all out. Just, just. Go ask the dealership how much they'll give you, how much they'll loan you. Have them run the credit check. Ask how much they'll give you. Tell them you need 20% more and tell them to make it happen. And they probably will. They probably will. What are we yelling at this evening? Overspending. Overspending on cars and houses. Um, I'm currently using 20 terabyte plus a month in bandwidth. I think I need fiber. If you're using 20 terabyte a month, you are in the 0.00001%. Completely made up number, but pretty close out, imagine. Dan, you know, you were literally on John's podcast a few years ago saying two to four certs were dark, right? I would love to see a clip if you have anything. I, um, what I believe I would have said is that honestly, I was breaking tons of boxes. I was grading Jungle Fossil First Edition, tons of pack fresh Jungle Fossil First Edition. Some of the cleanest Snorlaxes, Gengars, like I graded tens of all of them. I opened a dozen plus boxes of each. Some of the cleanest examples out there are in two certs. Some ugly ones are too. Absolutely. I, I will give you that. PSA was consistent in, in two cert era as they are today in eight cert era, as they will be next year in nine cert era. Um... But I, I would have said buy clean examples. Like, buy the card, not the grade. I, I've always said buy the card, not the grade. I, I don't buy into any of that stuff. I, I think it does more harm than good if you say that these certs are better than those certs because it just promotes laziness. Like, if you actually care about buying an individual card, I'm not holding any cards. I'm not holding any graded cards that were not gifts. Like, I just don't care about them. I'm, I'm a slab seller, not a slab buyer. If I were a slab buyer, I would be buying the cleanest nines I could. Honestly, the best, best value on the market today is probably a super clean two cert PSA 9. Are there some PSA 9s that should be 7s in the two cert era? PSA 10s too? Yes. But some of the cleanest ones are there too. Because they are box fresh, open by Dan Catch em All Collectibles. And PokeRev. PokeRev was ripping boxes like a madman. Um, Gary, the majority of, of base first edition hollows graded 
the majority of them were greater than the two-star era. Are some tens that, that might be nines today, eights today? Yes. But are there are there tens today that would be nines or eights today also? Yes. Like greater suck at grading. Look at the card, regardless of the certain number. That that's my take. That's always been my take. If you can find a clip that says otherwise, I would love to see it. And I would apologize. <laughs> um yeah, if you're opening up any electronic with, like, capacitors, even if it's been unplugged from power for, like, 30 minutes, there might be charged up capacitors, so watch out. Do not do not open up electronics if you don't know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> there are very, very few three sir Pokemon cards, but most of it's sports cards. For whatever reason, at the time, they were doing sports cards in three-sir era. They, they were doing Pokemon cards in twos and fours. Now they now they mix them more. Yeah, if it's an electric hot water heater, that that would have probably been a uh, that that would have been two forty volt as well. That that would have been like a I don't even know how many amp breaker, but that would have been a two forty volt circuit instead of a one twenty. So, yeah, don't um don't be doing electrical work if you don't know what you're doing. And, and the thing is, like, I'm not going to Disney every year. I would not get the most value out of that. I, I actually say that. And my wife and I went to Disney last year for one day around Collecto, uh, Orlando Collecticon. We might be doing uh, Disney for a couple days around this year's Orlando Collecticon as well. But I am all about, like, every household has a certain amount of money. No household should spend more than they make. It only leads to bad places. But everyone should consciously, like, pay attention where it goes. Like, there are so many households right now that, that have a random Walmart Plus membership from the pandemic, and they don't use Walmart Pickup anymore. They have a random Hulu subscription that, that they're, they don't even use anymore, but their ex-boyfriend uses. It's like, you, you should be aware of what's going through your finances. You should be aware of where all the money's going. And you should stop, like, plug all the leaks. Stop all the leaks. Um, And, and again, like, like, Money is fungible. Like, whatever you spend here could be spent there, too. And I, I just see, like, getting the most value out of it. If you, uh... When you make the decision, if the bank says they'll give you $450,000 for a mortgage, you need to think about the actual implications of that. You can buy the $450,000 house, and it's going to cost you X amount a month, X amount in taxes, whatever. Figure that all out. Or maybe you could buy a $350,000 one, and then you'll have a surplus of whether that's 200 a month, 1,000 a month, whatever it is, depending on your duration, depending on your rate. Like, would I be happier having this house with more space with this or closer to the job or whatever? Or would I be happier being in a smaller house? Like, I, I'm a person who, who goes out and travels all the time. I'm barely home. I, I'm, 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 it, it's funny, too. When I talked about the city thing earlier, when I asked about what all these people do in all these cities, like... I've had friends say, like, I I'm getting up, I'm getting up out of that town. I don't want to live in that tiny town we went to high school in anymore. I need to go do stuff and see things. It's like, I can travel and do stuff and see things when I want to, but when I don't want to, it's like, I want to be somewhere cheap. Uh, but when I, when I told people, like when I asked chat, what do you guys do in cities that, that people just can't do out in the woods? I, I don't think I saw anything in chat about what people do in cities on a random Tuesday night on a random, like maybe they'll come and chat now but but to me it's like live in the woods spend a lot less on the house have a lot more money to save and invest have a lot more more money to travel with have a lot more money to dine out with have uh well n not even just like have more house have more land i i would rather spend i mean house location 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 get rid of the location like i, I just want more house I, I want more utility in my house uh, and, and some, again, some people, if you're going out, whatever you do every night that, that you need to do in these cities, I don't know what it is because I've never done it. E even when I lived, I lived in a city when I went to college and, and most of the stuff I did was like going and playing basketball with friends, which I can do here, going and playing racquetball, going like I wasn't doing anything to do with the city. Th there are golf courses around me. There are like, there's a lot of things to do out in the middle of nowhere too. Um, <laughs> So I don't know what all these things are, but uh, I'm not about them. So I found my value. Like, conscious spending. Spend on whatever you want, but consciously make sure you're getting all the value out of it. That you think, like, a lot of people just don't even think about it. They just 
mindlessly swipe the card. They mindlessly take the loan. They mindlessly, like, so many people are just not conscious of, of what they're spending on. In my opinion. Like, maybe I'm just yelling at the clouds. Maybe none of this makes sense. But I, I just, anecdotally, I've seen a lot of people who seem like they could be a lot more optimal with their spending. They could be spending, making and spending the same amount. They could just optimize their situation, carry less consumer debt, pay down credit cards. And instead of all the money they're spending on interest, all the money they're spending on depreciation, they could drive a slightly older car. They could have a slightly smaller house, slightly further house from wherever they want to be. And they, they could have a lot more money to do the traveling, have a lot more money to do whatever else they want to do. Um... I really enjoy driving my Porsche and eating at Ruth's Chris. Perfectly fine if that's what someone wants to do, as long as it's conscious spending. Because that's in. I'm sure this is probably a meme, but maybe it's not. Um, Ruth, Ruth Chris, hundred, hundred and fifty bucks for one person to go in and eat dinner at Ruth Chris. If you get like a really good steak, maybe a hundred and fifty to two hundred bucks. Just know that that same money. Say you only go five nights a week after work on the way home. That's fifty thousand dollars a year. So instead of Ruth Chris, you could find some, you could probably find a similar steak for, for half the price, honestly. Um, and then you could have 25 grand a year. You know how much of a vacation, I've never been on a $25,000 vacation. Most expensive vacation I ever went on was six or $7,000. It was my Alaskan honeymoon for two people, two weeks in Alaska. Flights, one week by land. We stayed at multiple places, Denali. We stayed uh, multiple places on the way down by land, and then we went from uh, Whittier to Vancouver by sea. One, one week by land, one week by sea. Seven thousand dollar vacation. I'll remember for the rest of my life. And that's only half the vacation you could have if you just found a, a substitute for Ruth Chris at half the price. Either one is fine, but like, what do you value? Me, I would value a half price Ruth Chris steakhouse and a twenty five thousand dollar vacation. <laughs> Dan, have you ever put less than $10 in your gas tank when it was on E? I've never not filled up my tank. So like growing up, I was always a saver. Uh, I, I've always like, I've always had good financial backing from my parents. I've always had a, a decent amount of money saved up from working with my dad all the time, holding the flashlight all the time. Uh, so I, I've never not filled up my tank. I've never been in that financial situation. And I, it, it's sad. It, it's sad when people, some self-induced, some not self-induced, but like, I, I don't want to get too, too, too deep down this, but many self, I, I won't say most, but I will say many self-induced. And, and honestly, depending on where the gas station is relative to where you drive, I will say I put in less than five, I, I've, I've put in less than $10 but only when I'm going to fill up my one gallon thing for my snowblower. So sometimes when you pull into the gas station, you see like $4. Maybe that was just the person filling up their one gallon thing with 93 uh, non-ethanol non for their lawnmower or for their snowblower. Hopefully, maybe, hopefully. But the amount of extra miles that people drive, like I, I used to go to high school with those people. I used to work with those people that, that would put in five or $10. And it's like the gas station's a mile out of the way for you. But by the time you do the math and you figure it all out, you're spending an extra five, 10 bucks a week, only putting in $10 every time you go to the gas station. It's like, like th that's the kind of suboptimal money spending that, that just needs to be fixed B because people are their own worst enemies. Some people are. What's the most you've spent on avocado toast? I've never had avocado toast. Um... Most kids want McDonald's. Oh, they love McDonald's. Second after Red Lobster. My son loved crab legs. I, I love crab legs too. Um, next after Red Lobster would be McDonald's for sure. My my daughter's number one would be McDonald's. John and Vinny's in WeHo. Best avocado toast. My wife spent $18 on avocado toast in Hawaii a couple years ago. I'll never let her forget it. I was disgusted. <laughs> yeah. Live frugally in most areas so you can splurge on the areas you value most. For me, it's travel. And uh, again, avocado toast, cappuccino, like whatever is your thing, wherever you get the most bang for your buck, do that thing. But like, I, I think so many people just get so like, 
caught up in things, caught up in the day to day. Like they, they just swipe their cre credit card left and right. They don't pay attention to it. And the money's just pouring out in all directions and they're paycheck to paycheck and they, and they can't catch a break and they can't get caught up. And they, uh, they would do a lot better to, to be more like the amount of time we spend on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube shorts, the amount of time we spend watching some 30 year old man drink IPAs and ramble about IRAs and ramble about cars and ramble about milk and lawnmowers. The amount of time we spend doing that, if we spent a tiny fraction of that towards improving our own personal finances, we would be so much further ahead. Um, um, no, she, she, she's actually good. She, she's, um, she's good. Come summertime, she's hardly going to be driving anyways. I mean, her commute is very, very short. Her car is it is an A to B thing, and it gets her from A to B. Uh, by next school year, once the summer ends, if we haven't done anything, and if she's like really on, on me about it, she, she can dri start driving the Sportage or something. We'll, we'll figure out something. How's it going, Dylan? Nice to see you in here. I almost bought a new car and tried to justify it, but deep down I knew it was a bad purchase for me at this time. Yeah, it, it's all about, um, it's all just about conscious spending. Like, I, I can't say, it, it's not my place to say that anyone shouldn't have that car or shouldn't buy that avocado toast or whatever. But, um, having th that Caleb Hammer guy, that, that Caleb Hammer guy, I've actually, I have some close friends and some old coworkers and stuff and some family members that I've dug pretty deep into their finances, done like a, a financial audit and just the amount of money that goes to servicing debt, like their goal, their, the reason they, they charge on a credit card is because they want to consume something when they don't have the money. The second that you start that cycle of consumption with other people's money, the same way that it's a compounding effect, like, um, compound annual growth. It, it compounds against you too. So if you're doing it the good way in your 401k and IRA, it's on your side and it's helping you. If you're doing it with 30% credit cards against you, that's, you're fighting a battle you will not win. You, you will never win against the exponential. That is compound annual growth. And, and credit cards grow, uh, they, they grow the same way, just negative. We, we don't want negative. So yeah, it, uh, it's all about just conscious spending. The second that you start having to go into consumer debt to support what you think you need, every dollar paid servicing interest is a dollar that you're not consuming with. So it has to be fixed. It has to be fixed, ideally, before it starts. But every problem is solvable. And I'm not talking to you, Bulba Store. I'm not talking to you with this. But I, I'm just, I, I take a question and then I get really broad with it. Um, yeah. It's all a balance. If you spend your life saving all your money, you might not be able to enjoy it. And the thing that I try to do, I try to consciously spend where I get value. Like I could afford to drive an Escalade right now. I, I could go to a dealer tomorrow. I could pay cash for an Escalade. Now I wouldn't have that money in my, I, I could do it for the business vehicle. I, I could upgrade my Sportage to, a, to an Escalade. Paying cash, boom, I own an Escalade. No additional utility to me I don't get anything out of it. Like I, I would m more gas, more gas guzzling. It would cost me more to upkeep it way higher insurance, way all that stuff. And I, I would not enjoy that. Like I, I honestly, my optimal enjoyment of a vehicle right now is the car that I have. I could spend more money on a vehicle and get nothing more out of it. Enjoyment wise, as far as like food and stuff goes, I mean, I'm working on losing weight. So I'm actually working on like eating less, cut, cutting my household grocery budget, trying to lose some money. But there's really nothing that I'm like longing for. I, I mean, we, um, I, it blows my, like when, when I talk to people and, and a lot of times it's like houses, sometimes it's like clothes. Some, as a household, I still need to do my budget video. I'm going to have to do that in the next few weeks. We spend under like 50 to 60 grand as a household, family of four with three pets, a dog and two cats. I don't know what people spend $120,000 a year on. Like if you live in a high cost of living and, and your groceries 50% more and your housing's three times as much, I get it. I mean, I would move away from that, but like, I don't know how people spend as much as they spend oftentimes. I, I really, like, I know people who live near me in houses like me 
that make 100, 150 a grand combined household income, and they're broke. They're paycheck to paycheck. Like, I don't know where it goes. I, I guess it goes on those city things that you guys do on random Tuesday nights that I don't want to do any, like, let me, let me see if I see it in the chat. Maybe I haven't caught up to it yet, but whatever you guys do in these big cities on these random weeknights that I, I just want to be home and doing nothing, I guess that's where all your money goes. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll get there. Um, Dan quit his job because his coworkers made fun of him, so he bought a new car. Th that's actually like, like, I genuinely did not care. I, I wear, um, Brad, Brad's actually the one who busted my chops over my shoes. Like, I literally wear a $20, maybe even a $15 pair of Amazon shoes. I don't even remember when I got them, where I got them, but I, I usually wear, like, a $20 to $30 pair of Amazon or Walmart shoes. I, I've had people, like, mention it. I've had people say something about it. Whether they're being serious, like, whether they actually care, I have no idea, and I don't care. But, like, some people that I used to work with would legitimately, like, bully me over it, maybe? Like, how sad of a life do you have to have? And, and I'm not saying this towards... Brad, if you picked on me for my avias legitimately, if you brought yourself up over bringing me down about my $20 shoes, then I am talking to you. I, I don't think you were, though. I think you were mostly just busting chops. But if you literally... If, if your joys in life are saying, I drive a better car than the engineer... I, um, I wear nicer shoes than the engineer. Like, what a sad existence. Um, I feel bad for those people. I, I took no offense to people saying things about my car. I remember my boss saying something to me about it, and I kind of joked, like, pay me more. G give me a bigger bonus. I'll buy a better car. It it's like, I, uh, I just graduated college a few years ago. I'm paying off my this, that. I'm like, I'll buy a new car when I want to buy a new car. But I, I remember at one point, someone higher up, I think it was my direct boss, and I kind of like, I kind of poked back with like, pay me more money and I'll drive, drive a nicer car. That, that, that was a funny interaction. Um, <laughs> um, I'm about to book soon, July 20th to 25th, Cosmo out of Galveston, Galveston. Doing some cruises. Love to see the cruises. If I send you the clip, will you send me $10 in Ethereum? If not, it's going straight to rattle. <laughs> $10 in Ethereum? It's going to cost me $30 in gas to send you $10 in Ethereum. Um, wow. A, a water heater on a 20 amp breaker? I, I have um my water heaters on a 20 amp breaker because I have propane. So the actual heating of the water is done. The... um. The, the plug that it has is just for the uh just for the uh the outlet or the igniter or not the outlet the igniter or the pilot or whatever but uh Zach says look at look, look at the skylines and dream big <laughs> oh what, skylines skylines like a type of car i i was thinking the type of car at first but uh the skylines of the cities i um I don't know. I, I've never been a city guy. Uh, like, when I go to Eclecticon, I get plenty of the city. If you've been with me at 2 a.m. closing the bar down, my favorite bars are the ones, like, near home. And I'm not, like, a bar guy at home. I, I go out to wing night every other month, maybe. Not even that over the past couple years. Um, I like going to a wing night from time to time with, with, with buddies. Uh, I like the bars where you can talk to people. I don't like the the crazy like that let that um that barcade that um uh, ready ready select or select start select start it was it was cool it was fine but like I don't want to be there for hours and we were we were I I can't believe I didn't lose my voice I just didn't talk but I I'm not about the the city bar scene I'm not about that kind of stuff I need to figure out more income to buy a house nothing sells for what I qualify for someday in Montana yeah I mean depending on how much you make like so, some people it's a spending problem some people it's just a straight income problem it, it all depends on the person <laughs> when Dan says play racquetball in the woods he means hit a pine cone back and forth with sticks <laughs> <laughs> oh man buy, buy a cheap car and you can eat wings and drink beer in the woods 
I'm way more scared of hillbillies than city hoodlums. I can get, I, I use, um, I use DoorDash. There's probably like, there's probably like 10 places that deliver DoorDash to my house. You, you go into a city and there's like hundreds. It's like my house, there's like 10 places. I, I live really close to the Turning Stone Casino. There is like a Capitol Grill level steakhouse in the Turning Stone Casino. Very, very solid steakhouse. If I want to go spend some obscene amount of money. Uh, but there are a lot of other good steakhouses. Plus, honestly, when it comes to steak, I can make a mean steak at home for a fraction of what a steakhouse costs. So that's where, like, when I go out to eat, I want to get something I can't make at home as good or better. So if I do go to a fancy steakhouse, I usually get an aged steak. I'm not set up to, like, aged steaks at my house, though someday maybe. Who knows? Um, I live in the city, and Zach showed up, drank my IPAs, and ripped my sealed Lorcana, then left. Those kind of dreams don't happen in the woods, Dan. Yes, see, those can happen. That that does happen all the time in the woods. Come on. <laughs> Why are we talking about two weeks vacation? I spend 95% of my life in my house. Let me enjoy my mansion, Daniel. So live in a mansion in the woods, right? Like, if, if you, like me, spend 95% of your life in your house on your property... Get a better house and property where there's less people. That's what I'm about. Like, whatever. Um, Dan don't know about the struggle. Shaking my head. A lot of... I'm not going to say the majority. I probably could, but I'm going to say many people's struggles are self-imposed. Honestly. We, we live... Uh, again, my, my my generation. My my age of individuals. Not everyone, but some amount of them. They say the American dream is dead and we can't afford a house and this and that and the government has to fix it for me. It is so achievable. The the thing is, the American dream that they're like idealizing from the, from the 50 one there there were so many things wrong in the 50s. When that one when that one wage could buy a house and this and that. The thing is the one wage was buying one vehicle for the house and it was a, a small little car. Well, it was probably like a big boat like whatever kind of car they drove. Back in the 50s the cars were pretty big. It was probably a pretty big car. It was probably a thousand square foot house. The average house, three times the size now. The average house has all these fancy electronics, all these fancy things, all these fancy thousand dollar things that we got to buy every year. We got to buy over and over. The American dream isn't dead. It's just 10 X. And like pe people can get by. People can not only survive, people can thrive. And like for people in the United States, how, how, um, how crazy that comes out as being so privilege like from that privileged position to say that the american dream is dead when, when people like what some other people are born into in other countries that have no shot out the gate it, it's sad really it's sad um I, i'm probably getting texted by my wife being yelled at oh she said def need a new car 30 minutes ago um, if she's listening now i'm gonna get yelled at for that but but yeah all, all these people that say the american dream is dead like they throw up their hands and they say Government, fix it for me, because I can't do it. You guys broke it, so you guys fix it. I, I, I'm going to eat my avocado toast. I, I'm going to spend all my money left and right, burn all my burn all my money, and hope you pay off this, and hope you pay off that, and hope you buy me a house. And It's like, control your own situation. Do what you can do, and you can do a lot in the United States. I promise you. Like th This still is the land of opportunity. I, I very much agree with that. I say this, obviously, born as a privileged middle class person like I, I was born into a even better situation but all of us that were born in the united states very very privileged and i know not everyone watching this some international people and all that but uh for, for people some of the people like some of the people that i know their personal situation they were born to higher middle class households than me they, they are making six figures and they're crying about how the american dream is dead because they can't buy a house in lower manhattan oh well my american dream is owning four thousand square feet 50 stories up in, in Manhattan that overlooks Central Park. So the American dream is dead because I can't buy that. It, it's like, okay, okay. Um, it's a funny thing you say here. So Colt, uh, Peak That True says, I put $20 in my tank every time because if I get in a wreck and total my car with a full tank, I've lost my car and a full tank of gas. My first vehicle, 1996 Pontiac Bonneville, this would have been in about 2006, 2006 because I was 16. It was a hand-me-down from my grandma. I, I paid zero for it. I'm, I'm a very privileged person. I paid zero dollars for about what would have been a $2,000 car. 
my, my, my grandma basically gave it to me. My dad might have paid her some amount. I don't even know. But my dad bought both mine and my sister's first couple couple thousand dollar cars. Um, and then he got the proceeds when he sold them too. But uh, that car blew up within like two months of me driving it. That summer, I could be wrong, but I think it would have been the summer of 06 or 07. Gas was like four and a half a gallon. That thing had a big tank. I want to say that thing had a 15 gallon tank. Maybe a, tw maybe a 20 gallon tank. That thing did not get good gas mileage. It blew up. The car blew up on me and it had like a three quarter tank of gas. And I'm like, dad, that thing has more than three quarter tank of gas. Can I siphon that thing out into some, in, into some things to put that? He's like, the car just blew up. You do not want to siphon out that gas. <laughs> I'm like, it's going to go to the scrapyard and they're going to siphon out the gas. And, but, but yeah, I, uh, I had a car totaled out because the engine blew up and it wasn't worth fixing. And that thing had like $70 worth of gas in it. I just put like 70 bucks worth of gas in it. That sucked. <laughs> um, my lawnmower was $1,500. Very, very cheap lawnmower. Let's see. I just want to take taste Pokey Chef's cooking once, and then I can leave the hobby. Come to come to Charlotte. I was watching a lot of Caleb Hammer for a while. I, I haven't watched him too much. I'm way too far behind on all my other content. One of my wife's coworkers was on a Dave Ramsey video. They had a video screaming, "We debt free." <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, get get an Escalade with spinners on it. See, I, I don't know cars at all. Like, I, I don't even know what people would buy. That that's just the thing that I go to. <laughs> Dan Uber he ordered one McChicken sandwich, and the bill was one hundred and twelve dollars because he's so deep in the woods. I have ordered, I have ordered DoorDash, and I have ordered delivery from like a pizza place. They canceled my order because they're like. I don't know why, why, like, this was not supposed to be in our, our delivery radius. Somehow your order got through and we had to cancel it. So I've had multiple orders canceled for being too far. And I, I've had, like, their service area updated on the app <laughs> due to me. Danny, ever catching up the chat? I, I will not end this live until I catch up with the chat. I'm only 11 minutes behind. Dan had new shoes on the next time I saw him, too. Name, brand, and everything. I, I, it's funny. I... <laughs> My shoes are like, I still have those $20 Amazon shoes, but when they were like, when they were nice, they were never nice because they're $20 Amazon shoes. But when they were new and clean, I would wear them anywhere. Like I didn't care. The thing is like my property, my backyard is very wet and I, I'm just dumb sometimes. I've walked out back like in the spring when the snow is melting, I've, I've walked through the mud. They got so muddy, dirty. I, I think if I threw those things in the washer, they'd probably disintegrate. So I'm kind of stuck with like muddy, dirty, nasty shoes. I'm like, I can't wear these things. I, I looked to, tr I was trying to buy the same exact pair on Amazon, Walmart, wherever I couldn't find them. So um, I ended up buying at uh, at some discount shoe store. I spent like forty dollars on my last pair of shoes. So uncomfortable, so terrible. Like I bought something that felt fine for the one minute that I stood in it at the store, and, and they looked fine. They felt fine. I forget what they were. I don't even remember. $80 shoes marked down to 40 bucks, whatever. Um, I wore them the whole Dallas Collecticon. My feet were screaming at the end. Like, they were miserable. I, I can't even wear them at any... Like, if I'm going one place, one off, we're, we're going out to dinner tomorrow night. My wife and I are going out to dinner. Um, my kids are spending the night at my parents. So um, I'll wear them tomorrow night because it's like a one-off going to dinner, not going to be walking far. I can't wear those things to Orlando. I can't wear those things to Disney. I got to get another pair of shoes. But my avias, my, my crappy $20 avias, I can't wear those to Collecticons anymore because they're just so dirty. They're, they're, they're like really dirty. <laughs> my avias is dark. Still love you, Dan. The only reason I even know what brand they are is because Brad pointed them out. And then I, I, I like looked into it, looked into them. Um, yeah, Peak That Shoes always sending me shoe links. Mm. Vans, I forgot. That is what my new shoes are. Uh, 
Dan wears DC and watches Fantasy Factory, tries out words like lit and bussin' in the mirror. <laughs> Dan in the country, is it easier to get away with drinking and driving? A lot of people definitely do it. I, I am not one to do that. I, uh, no, that that's, uh, not a good thing, obviously. But, uh, oh, I mean, people do it all the time. I, um, like, if I go out to a wing night by myself, I, I will keep track of how long I'm going to be there. I will have a beer and then drive later that night. Like, but, but I will not be, I will not be drinking 7%, 6% IPAs. I, I will drink like one Utica club, have my 10, 15 wings, have my fries, hang out for an hour or two, like maybe have two Utica clubs and then drive home two hours later. I, I will not get remotely anywhere. Like, oh man, but, but I've been with, with, with people, you see people across the bar and they're doing shots and they're doing IPAs and they're doing this and that. And it's like, oh man, you know, they're going out, getting in their car and driving home. You know where they live, small town. It's like, man, it, it's uh, not something to mess with. Uh, where I live, you, you can't really just like Uber home. But like, if you're going to do that, just do it at home. You can't get sloppy like that and then drive home. Bad stuff. Life advice, health advice, everything advice. Do not drive drunk. Do not drive buzz. Do not drive. Alcohol can be really expensive too. Haven't touched it this year and saved a ton. I drink like, I drink less than once a month. Like when I go to, uh, like I, I'm a pretty, my wife doesn't agree. She doesn't believe me, but I'm a pretty introverted person. Uh, drinking like opens me up more. It gets me a little bit more like free to talk and I have a better time. Like I go to a wedding, I have some beers. I, I do, I will never dance sober. I get a good buzz going. I'll, I'll be dancing. I'll be, I'll be fine with dancing. When you inviting me to the woods to rip dead TCGs and make content? Someday. Someday. Dan, most expensive meal you paid for in full? I'm curious since food spending is your vice. Food spending is not my vice. I, I, I'm i actually fine spending on food. I, uh, my wife and I, we went to the, the Turning Stone Casino, their steakhouse. I mean, I, I went to, uh, Every Collecticon, we usually pick one night and we go to like a big fancy steakhouse and I've gotten crab leg appetizers. I've gotten big steak dinners. I, like my wife and I together, we've probably spent 250 on a meal. That's like once a year tops. Uh, if you look at like true value, I can maybe justify that once a year, once every couple of years. And the, the, the return that I get on that investment makes sense because it's a really good experience that stands out. But overall... I'd rather get pizza and wings five times with the family. I'd rather go to Red Lobster with my whole family instead of just me and the wife. I'd rather go to Red Lobster with the whole family twice. I'd rather go to uh, to just some random place, get burgers and get whatever. I'd rather get McDonald's and 20 times. You, you know what I'm saying? It's all, about, uh, it's all about what you value and getting the best return on your spending. I would love to, I would love to get a dry engine cooler set up. <laughs> My annual alcohol budget is terrifying. My annual alcohol budget is probably like a couple hundred bucks. I buy some rounds. I buy a bunch of beers for myself at the conventions. I mean, I might buy, I might buy six, 12 packs the whole year of IPAs. Like I do not drink a lot of beer. I, uh, I'm not like, I'm not like drinking six or eight IPAs every night or anything. I'm not drinking one IPA every night. Work at a brewery so my IPAs are free. Nice. Listen to his privilege. Struggle is self-inflicted. WTF. Um, I'm not saying everyone's. A lot of people's. A lot of people's. I'm not even saying the majority. I'm saying a lot of people's. Am I playing any TCG? Oh, that, that's from basic. That's for basic. You're 45 minutes from me. Is that me? I'm 45 minutes from you. Yeah, man, the five granola bars I bought for $12 this week was definitely privilege. $2.40 granola bars? I buy a 48 pack of Chewies for like 12 bucks. They're like 30 cents a piece. Come on. 80% collecting, 20% flipping for basic. Did anyone guess Bonneville? Yeah, I had a 96 Pontiac Bonneville. Yeah, I um I have like a head cold going on. I 
yesterday morning I woke up like really stuffy, really congested. Took some ibuprofen to kind of try to knock it down, which did work, but I had a headache all day. Wait till my video drops this Saturday. I I'm going to record a very dark, uh, a very dark Stein collecting video. Y you're going to get to know the history of Schultz and Dooley and, and the whole gang, the whole gang there. I, I might, I might knock down like the whole, like one whole side of this so that I can have the whole gang there of Steins. I actually, I remember when I was putting up these shelves, I specifically set the height of the top shelf to fit Schultz, because Schultz is a tall boy. Shoes are just tools, Dan. I, um... I should definitely spend more money on a quality pair of shoes, but, like, not, it's not like a looks thing. Honestly, the, the $20 Avias, I've, I've put a lot of miles on those, and my feet feel good afterwards. Those $40 Vans that, that might look better, they've got a label, they've got a brand... Miserable, miserable a few days in Dallas. Those sucked. Um, function over fashion. Th those, um, those vans. And honestly, like, I could be wrong here, but I, I think if I, if I wore those vans through all the stuff that I subjected those avias to, I think they'd wear out quicker. I, I don't think you're getting, like, durability for that. I think it's purely fashion, and it's just not worth it whatsoever. We have a pretty nice mattress. I'm I'm really happy with our mattress. Just sold eight nightfall release boxes in one order. Are we headed to the moon? Yes. Basic, you should go for that Lorcana World Championship. Yes. Dan prefers to walk in cursive instead of drive in cursive. Yes. <laughs> wedding Dan has a good time. We had barbecue at our wedding. We actually had a, a semi-local place cater our cater our wedding. We had um we had chicken barbecue and we had pulled pork and it was like, I, I've been to, we, we actually had a, we got married in a, well, we got married in a field. We had an outdoor wedding in a field and then our, um, our reception was in a barn. That That's like a thing. Like there are barns near me back when I got married, they were, I don't know what they're charging today. Pro probably 20 grand just for the, the building, just for the barn. When I did my wedding, we paid 1500 for a barn. We had to rent tables and chairs and everything else on top of that. There were barns renting then for six to eight thousand dollars just for the structure, and then you had to have everything else on top of it. It's crazy. Um, we did the barn for fifteen hundred. I want to say our food bill was like it was like one hundred and fifty to two hundred people, and we probably spent like twenty five hundred bucks on the food. It was probably like eighteen bucks a plate. What would it be like eighteen bucks a plate for one hundred and sixty people? My math is not uh, doing great right now. Yeah, 18 bucks a plate for like 160 people would be 2,900 bucks. That feels roughly right. We provided our own alcohol. We had a couple kegs of Coors Light, a couple kegs of Utica, or one keg of Utica Club maybe. My, my dad actually, like my, I think my in-laws bought the DJ and my parents bought a bunch of alcohol. That was part of their wedding gift. All in though, our wedding was like six to 7,000. Our honeymoon was like six to seven thousand. Good value, cause like I've been to hundred thousand dollar weddings. I, I've been to fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollar weddings, and I've been at some where the food was amazing, food was great. But I've been at some where like it's like I didn't even get full. Like I, I didn't eat enough. I need more food. I was like looking for. I was like trying to DoorDash food to the wedding because they didn't feed me enough, or like the food wasn't even good. It's like I know I know they paid a hundred bucks a plate. Including open bar, which is always the killer. We didn't have to pay for open bar. We paid two girls we went to school with to bartend for us. We paid them a couple hundred bucks. They got tips all night too. Um, but like, this is another thing. We've done the houses. We've done the we've done the cars. Let's do the weddings now. People like one of the number. Like, I think the number one reason that that marriages fail are financial like disagreements, financial hardships. And so many people out of the gate, they start themselves so in the hole off their wedding. It's like I, I told my wife many times before, during, since, whatever. The big thing that matters at the end of this day, we need to be married. It might rain. This might happen. That might happen. 
overall the day went really well and like honestly i, I couldn't have asked for a much better day weather like, everything it was it was awesome um but the big thing that matters is like we're we're gonna be married at the end of this day and we're gonna go on an amazing vacation so many people like have such a miserable time planning their wedding and getting it all prepped and they just sweat so much like anything going wrong and this person did that and this person wore the wrong color this person like dress however you want be comfortable we're, we're, we're having a reception in a barn like cows were in here at some point in the life cycle of this barn um do whatever like have a good time when i go to a wedding i'm there to have a good time it's like yes i'm there for you i'm there to support you get married do all this stuff but like some people like they, they just they spend so much that they they end up ultimately getting divorced years later because they're in financial ruin one of the first things was like first they had that crazy eighty thousand dollar wedding that they couldn't afford then they leased that tahoe that they couldn't afford then they bought that house in in lower manhattan that they couldn't afford and then they got divorced then the house went to a short sale and i bought it and yeah <laughs> the circle of life Let's get Dan drunk dancing in a pair of Yeezys. No, no dances. I'm I'm not drunk at all. Like I I'm slowly, slightly starting to feel a buzz. I think Retro is drunk at this point. This man is never this active in chat. Um, my my alcohol budget is a lot, mainly from buying nice wine to sit on, lots of bourbon, and like eighteen dollar four packs of hazy IPAs. One of my one of my old coworkers, one of my friends, he's a he's a big beer guy. Like he he probably he has a couple beers every night probably. And I remember when we did a um, a master's program together. We we went to uh we went to yeah like uh, off our our company paid for most of it. I left so soon after graduating that I had to pay a little bit back. But uh, every time we'd go meet up at, at uh the the campus for one of our on site things. He'd have these like 16 ounce crazy fancy IPAs. This one's 20 bucks. This one's 10, like all this crazy stuff. I drank it. It's like, that's fine. I, I don't know. Like to me, I, I think these are like, I think these are $20, 12 packs. Usually it's crazy. Cause it's like, it's 12 to $15 for a six pack. But if you can find the 12 pack, it's like 20 bucks. So it's way better value. I, I get the 12 pack. Um, but a 12 pack will last me. I, I well, there's definitely been days that I've done the whole 12 pack, especially if I'm starting at like noon or something. That that's easy. But lately I try to start a little bit later. I try to make a 12 pack be like two sessions instead of one. <laughs> 55 view video incoming. Absolutely. It, it, the Stein video is not going to be a ton of views, but honestly, th this I said it in my um I said it in my video on Monday. This channel is about my journey. Steins used to be in my eBay username. Steins was a decent part of my journey. And last Saturday at, at the convention that I vended, at, at the trade show that I vended, I had a great time. I caught up with a bunch of old friends. Old being like, I hadn't seen them in a while. Old also being like 60 to 80 years old. Um, most of them. But I had a great time. It, it, was, it was a really good time. Sales were really good. The market is surprisingly on fire for certain things. Uh, it's down for certain things and I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait to draw all the analogs between that and Pokemon and, um, but yeah, that, that was a, a chapter closed in my, in my flipping life. No more flipping steins. Will sword and shield keep rising rapidly in price or would you bet on sets like Paldia evolved 151 English? I don't know. Um, it's hard to say. If I had to put 10 grand into something today and lock it up forever, I would probably buy something like Battle Styles. As crazy as that sounds, but I, I've been able to buy like Battle Styles at 100 bucks a box. It's it's almost a couple years old. I know you can get Scarlet and Violet sets at like 70, 80. I just feel like they might be around a little bit longer. I feel like Fusion Strike at 200. I, I feel like Evolving Skies at 700. I feel like sets like that, you, you already missed. Like, you, you want to catch... A lot of a lot of sets trajectories will, will kind of be like this. They'll, they'll kind of go up crazy and then they'll plateau. You don't want to hold them. You don't want to buy them at the start of the plateau and sell them 10 years later for 10% higher. You want to buy them 
obviously, right before one of these. You never know when that's coming. But uh, it all depends on your goals. It all depends on the amount of capital you have. It all depends. Like, most people would be better served. Like, some people listening to this, some people contemplating, and this is not you. This is not anyone in particular. Some people are doing this on credit cards at 30% interest rate. Your lowest hanging fruit to pluck, pay off those damn credit cards. Fund your employer match 100%. Take that full employer match. Like, it's all, everyone's opportunity cost is different. So I can't advise. But me personally, all my things are maxed. All everything's done. What am I buying? Whatever people email me with. Just recently, I spent like, I bought, I bought probably five modern sealed collections, investments, whatever, in the past two weeks, maybe about 15 grand total. I bought a couple thousand loose individual packs of Crown Zenith, Scarlet and Violet sets, some Sword and Shield sets, a big mix. I bought another collection like that. I bought one that had like a bunch of evolutions. I bought, but I was buying them at like 80, 85%. So if I have something knock on the door at 85%, I'm more likely to buy that over buying something at 100%, right? So it, it all depends on like what your opportunity cost is, what your other opportunities are, in my opinion. That video, definitely 10 out of 10. <laughs> Probably. $150 Yeezy, 350 compacts, most comfortable shoe you'll ever wear. I had a long stretch, so I could be wrong here. Maybe somebody in the, in the, maybe a sneaker head in the chat will fact check me. The Nike Cortez. My, my dad wore those shoes. I want, I could be wrong. He was born in 68. So in 76, he would have been eight, seven, well, dependent, seven or eight. It was his birthday yet. I want to say that was the year those came out. From like 1976 until like 2010, I think that's the only shoe my dad wore. He just had like bulk quantity of those shoes. And there was a stretch where I wore them, like like the new modernized whatever. I want to say a little tag on the front of the shoe. Th those I used to buy those for like 50 bucks a pop and I'd buy multiple shoes at a time. I really like those. I think they look nice. 50 bucks a shoe, that, that was kind of, that was back when my parents were buying my shoes. That was like in high school or whatever. My parents were buying my, buying my clothes. Maybe a little bit into college I wore those, but then probably once I started buying my own shoes, I'm like, ah, I don't really, uh, I can't justify it. But those were comfy. Those were nice. I think they look good. 150 though. Like, I feel like that's the Ruth Chris thing. 150, like, yeah, they're probably great, but there's probably something that's 75 that's just as good. Like, I, I, would, I would be shocked if there wasn't something that was 75 that was just as good. Um, he's complaining about not having comfy shoes. Just get some Yeezys, Dan. You don't know about that Ultra Boost yet. I don't want Yeezys. <laughs> you know you've watched Dan since the beginning when you've heard his marriage story for the third time. <laughs> like, again, spend your money how you want to spend your money. But I've been, I've been to $80,000, $100,000 weddings where... Like, I've been to $800 weddings, too. I've been to we weddings at, like, a, a Legion or a VFW. I've been to weddings at, like, a state park where it was just, like, like the, the parents or, or somebody of the bride and groom, like, bought a bunch of alcohol, probably did the catering as, as gifts to the, the people getting married or whatever. I've had a blast. Like, it's all about the food and the people and the music and maybe having a little bit of social lubrication via the alcohol. Um... So yeah, I, uh, I've been to dozens of weddings probably and the fun I've had, the amount of fun I've had is not proportional. The, even, even how good the food was is not proportional to what the wedding cost them. W one of my closest friends actually from college, he, uh, he spent more on his photographer than my whole wedding cost. And I remember shortly after his wedding, a few weeks after his wedding, when he, when he got all the, all the images, they were like looking at the edited images and they were like not happy with some of them. And I don't think they even could get the raw images from the photographer. Like their, their package only included whatever. I, I had my cousin, my first cousin, one of my first cousins, 
she's like a, a photography enthusiast. Like she had a multi thousand dollar camera, whatever it was, crazy fancy. And I just asked her, I'm like, would you be comfortable? One of her hesitations was actually that like she was nervous because like that was a huge like she's never done a wedding. She she's just like a hobbyist. But I said, oh, I'm I'm gonna have another person too. Plus, I, I know some weddings they go like no phone. We um. Some people go no phone, then some people do like a hashtag. They, they like want you to post things to Instagram and, and do a hashtag so that they can have them all. But uh, between my best man's mom, she she's like a, a photograph enthusiast, a photographer, whatever, hobbyist, photographer. So her present to my, my wedding to us was, was taking pictures and she loved to do it. Like same as my cousin. So to my cousin, I'm like, hey, you'll have a backup. If all your stuff gets erased, if all your pictures are terrible, we have a backup. Like, don't sweat it whatsoever. Oh, you, you, like, this is your gift to us. We're, we're paying you nothing for it. So don't sweat it whatsoever. So yeah, we, we had two people take pictures of our wedding, pl plus all the pictures from all the other cell phones that were there. We ended our, our thing with thousands of, literally thousands of pictures. And I, I know people who paid six, eight, ten thousand $10,000 for a, a photography package that only included 100 or 200 photos. It's like, I, I just, I, I don't understand that stuff. That's crazy. Um, the whole go, going back through the whole live, two and a half hours now almost. I probably will have to wrap up relatively soon. I have one more IP after this one. I, I need to speed up a little bit and then uh, might have to wrap up. But like, that's where conscious spending, conscious spending. Never in my life could I justify $10,000. But someone who has a keen eye for photography, like th this is Dan who used to stream off a Game Boy, uh, photo, uh, a Game Boy camera, who now streams at 1080p, three years later, for the first time, streams at 1080p. Two and a half hours in, zero drop frames. Zero drop frames. So T-Mobile, I'm all in on T-Mobile, no affiliate link, not sponsored, but uh, sorry DSL, you're done, you're done. Um, I would never be caught dead spending 10 grand on photography, I'm too broke. And I, I don't get the value of it. But if you do, do you. Like, if you're a photographer, if you need that 100K, all the videos, and like, do it. But consciously do it. Like, to me, spend that on paying down the house. Spend that on traveling in the future. Spend that on our future married lifestyle together. Um, yeah, Pokey Barn says we got married at the courthouse, had a cheap party on our family's property. I know a bunch of people that have got, they, they went and they spent 35 bucks at the courthouse, did all that, and they treated it like, they treated it like a graduation party. They, they treated it like, like think, um, I, I actually had uh, my cousin and I, different cousin that was my photographer, one of my different cousins, we had a joint, uh, we had a joint uh, graduation party. And we had, my, my dad did a pig, he smoked a pig, we did a pig roast, and it was just at like the, the local firehouse. And all of our friends came, Th there was alcohol for the adults, there was food, and maybe maybe some kids snuck alcohol, maybe some didn't, I don't know, I didn't, I, I genuinely didn't, but uh, it was a great time. And I, I've been to graduation parties where the parents spend probably five or ten, probably more than we spent on our wedding. And it's fine, it, it's fine if you've got the money, it's fine, like, it, it's all whatever. But like conscious spending, conscious spending is the biggest thing. That's going to be my tagline. Catch them all collectibles, finance, fisherman finance, spend consciously. I got married at the oldest brewery in Illinois. Chicken parm was like two pounds of chicken. Just got home out west, still streaming at 1 a.m. on the east coast. Not talking about Pokemon, standard dance stream. Absolutely. Um... Yeah, I remember getting a plate, and I remember doing the rounds, doing all the things you got to do, and it took me a while to get through my plate, for sure. Appreciate you, Chevals. Good job, and thanks for the three years of mostly good advice. I appreciate you. And obviously, this is a very subjective. For me, for Basic, for whoever else who owns the same sentiment, they're overrated. But there are people that have the money, that spend 100000 they get the value out of it. That's just, that's just not me. Like, where we were in life, we, we probably could have afforded to spend double what we spent. Like, we, we definitely could not have afforded to spend 60 grand or 80 grand. Our, our parents helped out a decent amount. Our parents give, gave pretty decent financial gifts. 
as I said, her 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 parents gave the the DJ. I think the DJ was like five hundred bucks, which again, some DJs are like five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, probably. But they get a band. Um, and then my parents probably spent equally on, on like alcohol on liquor. I want to say I bought the kegs. I, I think I think the day before, maybe the morning of my wedding, I think I was picking up the kegs. Maybe it was the day before. I don't remember. But uh, yeah. Conscious spending. That, that's all it comes down to. That, that's all I'm trying to pitch. I'm not trying to shame anybody for spending too much money, spending more than I would spend on a car, on a house, on a wedding. But like, just really think about it and really ensure that you're getting the value. Think where else those dollars could go and think if it makes sense. That's my biggest thing. Cortez's are a classic, not for me though. Want to buy those at 86%. I'm buying Dan some Iversons. Who remembers Starberries? My homie had a mashed potato bar at his wedding. I was busting out my suit by the end of that video. Trust me. I, I've been to a wedding with uh with a mashed potato bar. That wedding, I actually got a little bit, if, if my wife's still listening, I, I'm still in trouble. I still hear about that wedding occasionally. I drink way too much. Oh, my, my wife is listening. <laughs> she said, your parents bought the DJ. Mine bought the cakes. We bought the beer and wine. So I was wrong. I, I was remembering incorrectly, but my parents bought the DJ. Hers bought the cakes. <laughs> oh, man. We, we actually did a cake and then we did half moons. <laughs> yeah, that's common. The company owns the images and doesn't give you unedited. That is insane to me. Like, that just insanity. Like, like, if someone told me, if I said, hey, picture 3, 23, and 37. I love these pictures, but I don't like how you edited them. And I paid them $7,000 to do pictures at my wedding. And they said, oh, well, if you want all the pictures unedited, you can't buy them onesie twosie. You can't buy them individually. You got to buy them all at once. And that costs an extra $2,000. That would, uh, that, that would send me, I, I would be done. Like, holy crap. The, the fact that that exists, the fact that that is a thing that blows my mind. I'm very thankful. Thank you to my two photographers. I'm not going to dox them. I'm not going to hit the government names on them. But I, I very much appreciate those wedding gifts. Uh, I, even if I had not, um, th there's people that I graduated with that did photography. I, I mentioned we, we hired a couple girls we graduated with to, um, to do our bartending. I would have just hired... Somebody that I, I would have hired somebody for 500 bucks or whatever. I, I would have never done a $5,000 photographer or anything, but, uh, I was a good boy. I graduated high school at 17. I graduated high school at 17. I turned 21, like a month and a half before college graduation. I, I was a youngin. Forrest Gump's original worn Nike Cortez shoes just sold for 58k on Heritage. They're filthy, lol. That's funny. <laughs> My dad used to wear those Cortezes until the bottoms were just like flat, completely flat, wearing through. Oh man, Jared and Jordan. Love to see you two in here. Congrats on three years. Ha ha, hopped on your live just in time to catch a trip down memory lane. Back to that graduation party. Yes, you guys would have been there. Hashtag conscious spending for real. So Jared and Jordan, two, uh, two very, very close family friends, very much like brothers to me. Um, th they're doing big things on YouTube right now. They got that, see, they got that check mark. Um, glad to see you guys stopped in. I just did get to the bottom of the chat. How can you be wrong about what you bought? Are you not conscious of your spending? Wait, where was that? Um, how can you be wrong about what you bought? Are you not conscious of your spending? I don't know what that comment was towards. It was only two minutes ago. Have you checked out your local antique slash vintage shops for cards? I've not been to the local like LGSs to me in a couple years. I actually need to get back to them. I want to kind of go and like talk, see if we can do any business. Um, 
but no, not really. I need to be better about checking those periodically. I did, I did defeat chat. I always do. I always catch up. Yeah, you guys are doing big things. Keep on, keep on doing what you're doing. You guys are killing it. With that, I, I still have a full IPA. I, I was hoping chat was going to keep me going till, till I could clear all my IPAs. I only had, I only had five of them. Um, I had one before the stream and I've got two and a half empty, one to go. Imagine Dan dealing with his local stores and not me. Hey, I, I, I've got all my Cardinal merch. Um, nice thing about obviously the local stores is I can drive to them. I, I want to go like, like Mason. He, here's actually a good theoretical Mason. Since we've got you in chat. Um, if you had like a, a local streamer, n not a streamer, if, if you had a local streamer, online retailer, whatever they were, they're just like, hey, I, I live 10 minutes from you. I actually do full-time Pokemon online. Is there anything you have too much of? I, I know you might answer bulk. Is there anything you have too much of that I might be able to take off your hands? Is there anything you don't have enough of that I might be able to help you supply you with? So, like, basically, if someone that lives 10 minutes from you that does Pokemon full-time at, at a reasonably high level, if they came to you and said, how can we do business? Is there any way we might be able to do business? What would your answer be? Because what I'm contemplating doing, I, like, I live in the woods, and I probably have four LGSs within, like, 30 minutes of me, which feels like a lot. I, I know some people who live in cities that say they have none. So... I kind of want to go to them. I, I kind of just want to see like, hey, if not, no worries. I'll leave. No issue. I, I'm, I might buy something. I might rip something for whatever. I don't want to waste their time. But like, hey, I, I do Pokemon online like at, at a reasonably high level. Maybe there's something that you could use help with. Maybe there's something I could use help with. Maybe we can do business somehow. Maybe I can sell to you. Maybe I can buy from you. I don't know what it is. But like, do you see anything there? I definitely pass them along my Japanese singles and stuff like that. I'd be happy to take half value on just to not deal with. Like, absolutely. Like, what I'm hoping is that they'll say, we get some people trying to sell XYZ that we don't really deal in. So I'm hoping that I can leave them. Like, just in case, I'm going to go with a way fatter stack of business cards than this. I, I will tell them straight up. I, I will be like, hey, I'm an honest dude. I run an honest business. If you give people my card and I end up buying from them, I, I will give you an X percent finder's fee. I will give you what, like, if there's a collection that you don't want and you want to just refer them to me because you don't deal in it, maybe um, we can work something out where you send them to me and I give you a finder's fee. Like, I I'm actually really interested to see how they receive it. I, I feel like th there's probably certain LGSs across the country. There's probably certain LGSs that exist. I, I feel like this would not be too too hot of a take. There's probably some LGSs that a guy comes in, hey, I do this online, like, they would probably be mad at me. They would probably be like, oh man, who's this guy I think he is? Uh, hopefully, I, hopefully I don't run into that. I'll, I'll try to do it in a way that's like, hey, if not, no worries whatsoever. We've been doing business separately for years and, and we're, we're both doing fine clearly. But uh, if we can possibly do anything together, like, I'm here. If not, that's fine. Like, I'm really interested to see how each one of them kind of react to that question. Hopefully, hopefully they have, um, like, like maybe they say, we, we don't have the time to really justify grading a lot of stuff. And we could use a lot of low end 10 to $50 slabs. Like, like maybe I find an outlet to just co like consign slash sell stuff through them cash uh not having to pay the individual shipping on each slab i have no idea i have no idea what might come up but i'll be interested to have those conversations it, yeah happy birthday mason I, I don't know if it's 1 30 a.m here so i don't know if the 28th is your birthday birthday or, or the 27th is your birthday but either way happy birthday appreciate you being here Your wife correcting what you bought for your wedding. Oh, he says, um, yeah, what, what did he say? He said, um, oh, wait, I lost it. How can you be wrong about what you bought? Are you not conscious of your spending? So I mixed up. It's funny you say that because it, it's been nine years. Nine years we're going on later this year. Coming up on 10. 10's coming in hot. 
Um, I have a spreadsheet somewhere. Somewhere in a flash drive. Honestly, I probably have the flash drive right here. It's probably one of these two flash drives. Um, somewhere in a flash drive, or maybe it's this one. I have a, I have a drawer right here that has like 10 flash drives in it. Um, I have, a, I have a spreadsheet that has our whole, well, one, our invite list. We did that in Excel. I, I have our whole like breakdown of our expenditure for, for the wedding, for the honeymoon, conscious spending. It's just I've forgotten it nine years later. <laughs> um, I'm not going to shotgun them. Thoughts on taxes. There you go. That's 20 more minutes. I'm a big fan of taxes. Big fan of taxes. Mason, sell me all your master balls. Oh, wow. Slabs also. I pay 30% on $50 slabs because we just get so many coming in now. There's not a lot of money there, but definitely a source of constant product. Wow, Dan taking his trolling toad Evo playables for minty singles. Gross profits. <laughs> 28th is your birthday. Very, very happy birthday to you. Um, Yeah, like I have no idea what it could be, but maybe they'll say they have too much graded. Maybe they want more graded. I know the last time I stepped, well, there's one of them that opened up like a year ago. I haven't even stepped foot in it yet. The other two or three, I think one of them moved a couple years ago. I think one closed, one opened. I, I don't know. I haven't been to them though in a couple years at least. So I'll go in, I'll see what they have. Like, do, do they have enough modern product? Probably, probably right now, probably enough Scarlet and Violet. Do they have any Japanese product? Maybe I can hook, hook, hook them up with retro. Um, do they have any slabs? Do they have enough slabs? Do they have enough raw? Like maybe they're mostly sports. Maybe they want a little Pokemon. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm really interested to see. I know Java. Java has that relationship where he does like a little bit of, a little bit of like consigning, sets up his own little table there. I'll be interested to see what I can do. Do they have enough MetaZoo? Is that the real question? Oh, I can set them up. I can set them up for, for years with MetaZoo for sure. Um, I'll be, I'll be very interested though. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll film a little content. Um, if, if they're open to that, maybe I'll, uh, I'll say I'm, I'm a nano influencer as Cam has said before, very, very small channel, sub 5k, but I live local to you. I'm a full-time Pokemon guy. And, uh, I know a few people, I know a few people that follow the channel live very, very close to me. Some people might be familiar with the game stores. But uh, there are places near me, like, like I know that um, that Frankensons out in LA area, that is like a, a little like, it's almost like an antique mall setup idea, but, it, but it's mostly cards. It's like all cards, I think. Near me, it, I'm, I'm going to talk about it Saturday too, but a lot of my sales, not all of them, just like Collecticon, I, I did some sales to the end consumer. And I did some sales to uh, a reseller, a, a flipper, a dirty flipper. And the most common flipper that I sold to, I was selling at like 50%, Steins are dark. So I was selling at like 50% of what they'll get in their booth at the local antique mall. And when I say the local antique mall, um, there's a lot of antique malls near me. I actually live relatively close to Balkville, New York. I, I don't know if anyone will know of Balkville, New York. I, I feel like... That's a place that Sean of Reserved Investments might know of, but Buckville, New York has like this massive, every August, they have a massive antique show, like several hundred vendors spread across dozens of acres, like dozens of acres of fields get turned into this massive antique convention, essentially, for like a whole five day long weekend. And um, some of them set up there, some of them have like it's just like a an antique it's a big antique building that has a hundred vendors that each vendor pays for a table and they they pay fifty bucks a month or a hundred bucks a month for like the rent for their their table their section their booth whatever and they don't even physically stay there like I think Frank and Sons works where they stay there each vendor's there every weekend I guess but the way this one works is you just leave this stuff there so obviously you can't leave like you, you can't leave like five thousand dollars slabs ten thousand dollars slabs. You can't be leaving like Pikachu in clothes, but uh, cheap stuff you could leave, and they 
you tag it with, with the booth number and you tag it with the price. They go up front and they pay. Some amount of theft happens. Some amount of loss happens, I'm sure. But they have cameras everywhere and, and most people are honest and all that. But uh, it's an interesting idea. Um, but there are a lot of those antique malls near me. <laughs> Hooping Turtle 69. Been doing a lot of trades on Veriswap recently, around 20k total trade value. Apparently, the shipping middleman locations shift around California, Oregon, Arizona. Could be how they're avoiding economic nexus. Um, if you watched my tax video, sorry to everyone who, who think trades are like a way, and you, you'll probably never get caught. This is not advocating for anything. But the way trades work, if I bought a card for 100 and you bought a card for 100 and they're both worth today 1000 and we decide to do a straight up trade. Legally speaking, the IRS sees that as a thousand dollar sale from me to you and you to me. We both owe 900 in gains on our card. And if applicable, we owe sales tax on the transaction. So trades are treated as two simultaneous sales of the full value. How Veriswap, how all these platforms get away with it all, a lot of it is just like bigger fish to fry. A lot of it is like this stuff so unregulated, so small, who cares? But that's the way legally, technically, legally, whatever. That's the way it works. I'm not gonna tell anyone, pooping turtle 69, but that's the way it works, technically. I am probably going to wrap up really soon. I, I will definitely wrap up by two. Even if I get a couple more questions, I will answer them very quickly to be done by two. Does the IRS know about that gold coin I traded you a couple years back? I do not even know where that is, but trust me, everything that was done was done fully above board. Uh, so yes, <laughs> I, I genuinely... I bet you that coin is in the bottom of a five row monster box with like MetaZoo cards in it or, or with like, like it might be at the bottom of my bulk mountain, which pales in comparison to Mason's bulk mountain. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's probably inside a five row somewhere. It might be card saver or it might just be tucked in the side of a bunch of bulk. I, I have no idea. I have no idea where that coin is, honestly. I'd forgotten about that, but that is somewhere. Brad's always snitching. Brad's always looking, uh, looking for a way to snitch on people. I, I lost that coin at least five times. That's why I got rid of it. That's like a couple hundred bucks in gold value too. It, it's crazy. Like I have, um, I don't have a lot of gold. I, I have more silver than gold, both in value and in ounces, because, like, I don't know what the gold-silver ratio is today, but historically speaking, it's anywhere between 30 to 1 and 75 to 1-ish. Let's see what it is today. The gold, wow, the gold-silver ratio is 90 right now. Silver is horribly undervalued, according to that. That's crazy. Um, let me look up the 50-year. The 50 year gold silver ratio. Oh wow, it's been higher than that before. Oh, back in 2020, wow. I was doing gold and silver in, I was gonna say 2011, when silver boomed to 50 bucks an ounce. So the gold silver ratio was 30 in 2011 when it boomed, when, when silver boomed to 50 an ounce. But historically speaking, it's been anywhere between 30 and 120. I didn't realize it got that high. Wow, it's trended a lot more towards gold though lately. I, I didn't even know that. I've not kept up on coins. How do you feel on precious metals now? Just so many other options, IMO. I like silver and gold. Like, like the, the chemical engineer in me just likes them. But as far as investment, terrible. My dad actually, he, um, he's bought a bunch of silver. I, like he, I talked about it earlier. If you look at my grandpa's allocation, my dad's allocation, our portfolio allocation. And then mine, mine has way too much cardboard and crypto. My dad's has way too much real estate. 
too much silver. No, like almost no, like a little bit, but very little traditional like stocks, equities. Um, my grandpa's. I don't know how much he has as far as like index funds or anything, but he has a lot of individual stocks. So if you look at all three of our portfolios, it's like if you put them together, it's reasonable. Individually, they're all pretty bad. Um, so my dad is carrying most of the load with like the precious metals. Uh, I, I try to tell him like, hey, buy, buy more productive things, buy more like tax advantaged S&P 500. And, and he just doesn't go for it. He does really well in real estate though. He, he buys stuff cheap. He, he lives in it for a couple of years. He, well, he hasn't house hacked in a while, but he, he builds stuff cheap, lives in it, sells it later for a profit, builds something else new, makes money. Like he does well. I finished my second to last. I'm cracking my last beer. So nine more minutes. I'm here till 2 a.m. at the most. I, I'm very happy to say that I have zero drop frames from, from here on three years and one day in it took Dan to, to become a 1080p streamer but from here on out I will be streaming 1080p I'm a little nervous so first thing I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to I'm going to like I said earlier I have like 20 devices I have two phones two tablets two switches uh, two PCs. I have smart TV. I have like, I, I have tablets, like so many things. Tomorrow I will switch 20 devices all off the DSL, all over to the T-Mobile 5G home internet. And I'll see how it handles it. I'll probably do like a, a test live stream. Maybe, who knows what's going on this weekend. I do need to record my Monday video. I, I do need to do some stuff this. Maybe I'll do a RuneScape stream this weekend. Who knows? But I need to test the system with everything on this internet and then streaming on it. Where am I on my calendar? So, oh yeah, Sunday's Easter. Um, maybe I could do a Saturday night stream. I don't know. Maybe. At some point though, I want to do a test stream. Maybe I'll just like early mid next week before Pokey flips. I'll do a, I'll do like a RuneScape stream. Maybe that way, if it if it goes poorly, I can just bail. Um. But yeah, I, right now the only things on on it are my phone and, and the PC, and it's gone well. The Discord is linked to um the Patreon, which is in my link tree. So in the I don't have the direct link to the Patreon in my YouTube descriptions, but I have the link to my link tree of which in there is my, my Patreon link. Update me what we on now. Ernesto, I, I have a very lengthy list of thumbnail ideas for you. I know I need some thumbnails. Um, what we on now, I'm assuming like what, where are we making money? Um, S and P 500. It's that time of year. Max out your IRA, max out your 401k. For the next two weeks, um, it's all taxes. It's all tax advantage accounts. Test that stream with a first edition box break. Yeah. Shout out to PokeRev. Like, that is the strat. If you're ever breaking a big box, you have a secondary camera just uh, off the internet, offline. You be ready with that upload. That that was clutch. That was huge. Um, man probably has fiber internet too. Man's probably got like gigabit upload speeds he was probably on wi-fi i i don't know like he has answered a few of my dms over the years we, we used to talk back on e4 days i'll have to shoot him a message and just say like hey are you hardwired or not because you need to be hardwired he probably is i i would hope and pray that pokey rev is hardwired um dan tell the people how the moon controls easter so yeah very late night very late night collecticon outside of the hotel bar, over some IPAs. Somehow we, we were looking at the moon, it was almost a full moon. For anyone who doesn't know, the moon controls Easter. I think Easter, like I, I'm, not a, I'm not a religious person or anything, but some holiday, something before Easter, 
Lent or, or something like that is set after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. And then Easter is X amount of weeks after that. So I, I, somehow, like, just like these streams, we, we talk about lawnmowers, we talk about weddings, we talk about milk, we talk about whatever. Just like that, Collecticons, you can end up talking about anything. You'll, you'll talk about Pokemon, you'll talk about the day, you'll talk about the sales, the buys, all this. But late at night, you'll talk about anything. J just like hanging out with friends late at night, whatever, whatever comes up. Um, somehow, we, we looked at the moon, we saw the moon was really big, somehow Easter came up, I don't know. And somehow the discussion came up. I was the only one who knew. I wasn't super confident, but I knew Easter was set somehow by the moon. And it is. It is. So let me Google it really quickly, just so I can close out the stream telling people how to find Easter. Easter is celebrated on the first Sunday after the Paschal full moon, which is the first full moon on or after the 21st of March a fixed approximation of the March equinox. So they can describe it so many ways. But um, yeah, it's uh, the complexity of the algorithm arises because of the desire to associate the date of Easter with the date of the Jewish feast of Passover, which Christians believe is when Jesus was crucified. Way, way deeper than we need to be at 2 a.m. over some IPAs. But uh, yeah. It, uh, Easter can fluctuate a lot. Like, obviously, Christmas, Thanksgiving, what, what is it? The, the fourth Thursday in, in November, Christmas, December 25th. But Easter is one of those crazy ones that, that can be anywhere. So, yeah. The Easter Bunny is my favorite astronomer. <laughs> Easter changing dates is dumb. Just let me fix it into my brain when it is. That, that is very, I mean, that is a very, we need to cancel Pongo over that because that's a religious thing. That, that is very dangerous to say. That's, that's like racist against Christians and, and I don't even know what other religions. But be careful there. Be careful. Um, with that, with that crazy ending, I'm, I'm going to sign off. I think my wife is still up for some reason. So I'm going to go finish this last IPA with my wife. We've got a nice, she texted me. Four minutes ago, asking what my bedtime was. So I'm going to text her now. We have a nice date night scheduled for tomorrow night. The kids are sleeping over at the grandparents. So yeah, I hope everyone have a fantastic Easter. I celebrate Easter. I'm not super religious, but I, I still celebrate it. My kids have some nice pictures from the past week or two with a couple different Easter bunnies. And it's, uh, I love holidays for, for getting together with family that I don't see enough. So yeah. Holidays are always a good time. Thanks everyone for hanging out. I am uh I am three hours in, zero dropped frames. Very, very happy to say that. I appreciate everyone watching. I will catch you all later.